Hello and welcome to the Gfinity European Pro League. My name is Chris Trout, aka the Trout91. I'm joined by the lovely Inc. Hello. <laughs> We're here for week number five of the Pro League, and it is shaping up to be an incredibly big, big week in the Pro League. Obviously, it's the penultimate week. Yep. We're getting down to some results and fixtures that are going to mean a lot in the Pro League. Now, I do want to give a small little apology to those who are out there watching tonight. We had a small problem with the internet that the guys have been working on in the IT department all day to fix, and we just about got it there just before the game started. So I want to give a massive shout out to the IT department and a massive apology for those of you at home for the delay. But nonetheless, we are here with the Pro League week number five. It's going to be an incredible week. We have got some exciting games that decide all sorts of positions at both ends. Who's going to get relegated? Who's going to get promoted? But before we get onto that, let's have a little look at how the prize pool is going to break down for those who are challenging for that prize pot contention. It is seven grand for the winner, three grand for runners up, one thousand for third place, and three hundred pounds for fourth place. And obviously, we're going to be playing the Super Six that we have been doing in this pro league. Yeah. Very, very important in a lot of cases. Yeah, 100%. Well, obviously, we are going to be playing all six mats, as you said, which is why we're going to kind of be talking in this pre-show a little bit about the crucialness, if that's even a word, of map difference when it comes to the relegation battle, which Millennium, unfortunately, are in, and obviously the championship battle between Epsilon and Vitality. So, you know, there's a lot of ways the fixtures could work out at the end of this evening, which could have some... Quite interesting after effects, but obviously we're going to check the lead table now and you'll kind of understand what I'm alluding to. So as you can see, Vitality and Epsilon at the top there, all locked up at 12 uh, points apiece, plus 16 for Vitality, plus 14 for Epsilon. But Trout, what are your thoughts on the bottom there? It's very, very close. I think over Gaming Club at this point, unless they pull out a miracle, they are playing yeah. Vitality tonight, I believe, which is, we've all we've both pretty much given Vitality the victory in that case. It's very difficult for them to get out of that relegation spot right now. They need to put on two wins back to back and hope that Millennium and VWS don't really get anything out of their results, bearing in mind that both of them do play each other next week, which is something we'll come on to in a second. But as you said, it is very tight at the bottom. Millennium just trying to get away from that relegation spot right now, as well as Gamers 2 having yeah. a problem at the bottom of the table. And it's not looking good for either of those teams, but at the top of the table, Epsilon and Vitality both fighting it out for that first place spot. We pretty much writ infused off last week after they threw away yep. a series against Hypergame with some questionable play and what they were doing in strategies. And I know they were definitely giving each other the ear for it the entire way through that series, entire time after that series as well. It was it was probably not a nice time to be in the infused camp. So no. it was not the best of times. But going on to this week, we have got some incredible games. The game that we're going to be watching tonight is Millennium versus Epsilon, but you've also got Infused versus Over Gaming Club, Hyper Games versus VWS, Team Vitality versus Gamers 2. 100%. Well, the key fixture, which we're obviously not watching, or the other key fixture, I should say, is obviously going to be Vitality up against Gamers 2. The reason I say that is because if Gamers 2 get absolutely hammered tonight, 6-0, they then slip into a dogfight with regards to relegation. However, if Epsilon win 6-0 tonight and Vitality win 5-1 tonight in their fixture, both Vitality and Epsilon go joint top of the league. Map difference identical. Both will be plus 20, unless my math is absolutely horrific, which I hope it isn't. But, you know, it just goes to show how close this league is right now. And, you know, by the end of today's fixtures, we could see G2 and Millennium, you know, drop again in the league table. And all of a sudden, you're really fearing for both of those sides, to be honest with you, because playing the top two, chances are you're not going to get a victory. I do fancy Gamers 2 to take a map off Vitality, to be honest with you. And if that happens, and as I said, Epsilon cannot drop a map whatsoever because obviously it will go down to a head-to-head -head if next week Epsilon and Vitality get the identical result. And if it goes to head-to-head, -to -head, Vitality are your champion. So Epsilon cannot afford to make a mistake tonight up against Millennium. Absolutely. So let's quickly have a little look at our predictions for the night. I think we're going to see my predictions first. I predicted Infused to beat Over Gaming Club. As I said, Over Gaming Club probably going to fear the wrath of the eighth place finish in this league. Millennium yep. In my opinion, I don't think they're really bringing the heat. Their results over the Pro League and their results at tournaments recently haven't been the best. And Epsilon are just looking so strong at the moment. Possibly the best team in Europe right now. 5-1 yep. victory is what I'm predicting them tonight, which is our featured game on this channel. 
Hyper Games, I'm predicting to be a 4-2 win against VWS. VWS having a couple of roster changes. They have brought in Realize as a full-time replacement. I'm not too sure who that other one uh, is being the replacement for, who that is exactly. So I'm predicting Hyper Games probably to bring out the 4-2 victory. We saw them in very good fashion online uh, through this entire league and last week. And Vitality, I'm expecting them to win against Gamers 2. Gamers 2 could be a tricky one up online. I know Vitality haven't had the best of times facing some of the foreign oppositions online so i'm predicting them to win but i think it could be a scrappy little win from them so yep. let's move on to your victories and walk us through these ones i've been a lot more harsher as you can see by wow. the predictions on your screen i have taken no prisoners infused 6-0 up against overgaming and the reason i've put that is because two weeks ago although infused didn't perform very well last week infused did 6-0 millennium the week before last. And that is just such an impressive result. I think they're going to go on and do the same to Overgaming. Millennium against Epsilon. I have put Millennium to win one map. And that is solely because of the Kataga factor. I think you can never underestimate him as a player. When he shows up, he literally drags his team to the finish line. And I do fancy Millennium to take a map. But I think that will be very crucial uh, by the end of this EU Pro League. On to the next game. Hyper Games up against VWS. I've taken no prisoners again, I'm afraid. VWS, they haven't been good enough. With the roster changes coming in, obviously they are currently LF1. They have just got a sub in for tonight, which means they haven't been grinding with this person. They've just kind of got him in last minute, which does concern me. Obviously they <coughs> lost Juicy and Robs, if I'm not mistaken. So Hyper Games 6 0. Hyper Games just been on a tear up recently. Can't take anything away from them. And then Vitality Gamers 2, which this was the hardest one to choose between. I was very, very torn between 4 2 and 5 1, but I'm going to say Vitality will win 5 1. And if I'm right with regards to the championship battle going on, Vitality will be in a commanding position come the final week of the E Pro League. But yeah, it, it really could go either way, to be honest with you. Absolutely. And uh, looking over some of their previous results, we've got Millennium, who've actually they've lost 5 1 to Vitality, they drew 3 0 to Hyper Games, won 4 2 against Overgaming Club, lost yep. 6 0 to a team infused, and drew 3 0 against Gamers 2. So it's. It's not been the best that we've seen on Millennium. They are fighting off that relegation spot. And tonight, they're obviously playing Epsilon. Next week, they're going to be playing VWS. Now, VWS are two points behind Millennium right now. And they have Hyper Games, who's arguably going to be a very tough game against them. And Millennium on their last game of the week. So, assuming yeah. both these teams lost tonight, it would come down to the last game on the last week for those two to secure themselves a spot in this league next season, which will be a very quick turnaround from the season one. Whereas Epsilon have won 6 0 to Hyper Games, they've lost 5 1 to Vitality. 1-5-1 against Infused, 5-1 against Gamers 2, 5-1 against VWS. They've obviously got Millennium tonight, which we both predicted a 5-1 victory to, going through that 5-1 theme, it seems, for Epsilon. Yeah. And over Gaming Club, which, again, we've written over Gaming Club off. They're probably going to be able to win that. Now, it's up to the map difference for them, because they are behind Vitality by two maps at the moment. And they've got Gamers 2 and Infused left. That's who Vitality have got. Now, that Infused one could be a tricky one for them. Yep. Infused are very good online, so if Infused could upset them a couple of maps, it could be that Epsilon got it all to play for and they could win. And as you pointed out to me earlier, if it was a 5-1 win to Vitality, Vitality and a 6-0 yep. oh to Epsilon, mm -hmm. be even on map score, yep. and then it would come down to the last week. And if it they both finished on an equal score on that one, yep. it would come to a head-to-head -head decision, which means Vitality would take it. So Epsilon kind of on the back foot here. They've got the easier fixtures of the two yeah but on the back foot still yeah this is why tonight's fixture is so crucial because millennium you know if they take a map tonight well to be honest with you i'd say the key for the championship is probably in millennium's hands right now because infused i'm confident they will take a map off of vitality next week i'm confident of that whether it be 5-1 or 4-2 i'm not too sure i got vitality to win that next week but i'm getting a bit ahead of myself there um but for this week if epsilon wins 6-0 I would say they then become favourites to win the championship. If they drop a single map tonight, and that can be the sixth map, they could be 5 no up and then just get lazy in the final map. In my view, they could really shoot themselves in the foot and cost themselves the grand uh, pride, so to speak. And, you know, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope we're just going to see, you know, a very aggressive game from Epsilon. I think they're hungry to actually win this league, especially after losing to Vitality in the second week on the LAN event. So I think after that, They've really bounced back as a team. They've won, uh, I think it's now back-to-back -back LAN events that they've attended to. Um, one was in 
Europe somewhere, and the other was in um, up north in England. So obviously it's in Europe as well. I'm not saying it's not, but anyway, that's a, that's a different rant for a different time, people. So they're in a great run of form right now, which is, you know, I've said 5-1, but as I say, I expect a 6-0 from Epsilon if they are serious about winning this championship. But, you know, what, what do you think? With regards to the five one six nil, do you think it is as crucial as I'm making out, or do you think that you know, uh, you know, infuse next week they could cause an upset, they could even draw three three with Vitality? Do you think I'm getting ahead of myself here, or what are your thoughts on the matter? I think we when you've got two of the best teams in Europe right now, and we are just waiting for Epsilon to actually get a player restart one, and I think it's one of the Epsilon players is actually rebooting his Xbox right now, so we will get to the games as soon as possible, guys. Um, I think the map difference is going to come into play. I, I predict that both of these teams are going to be able to win their mm -hmm. g respective games. I don't think there's a question that Epsilon won't be able to. I mean, Millennium have been on really bad form lately. They've then got Over Gaming Club, w who have just been on horrible form right now. Um, and we've got Vitality playing both Gamers 2, which could be a tricky one for them. It could be they drop a map or two. And then we've got Infuse, they're going up, who are known as an online team, and they're very good at being playing online, maybe not had the best results l as of late, but they are still a strong team in their own respect, and if they want to, they will turn up and turn it on when they need to, so I think it's Vitality are looking like they're probably going to drop the maps uh, over the two. I could easily see Epsilon completely 6-0-ing both teams that they've got in their next two fixtures, so yep. I think Vitality team need to be very, very careful. I saw Rated, he actually understands how important a map is on this in this best of six series, because he said Oh, we choked a a five one win in that search a uh, five one lead in their search and destroy last week and he was like, Oh, if we lose the league because of a one map loss that they probably arguably shouldn't have done when you're five yeah. one up on search. Um it is it is devastating to know that. And they obviously understand how important those singular maps are. And I'm not too sure how Vitality are feeling about maps, whether they understand the importance of it, but it's definitely starting to sink in, you know. When you come to when everyone came to the land, they're like, oh yeah, oh they were just like saying, oh a map dropping a map isn't is important. It's not yeah. the most important thing in the world. Yeah. Um, but they are starting to realize how important it is, and they clearly want to win every single map. So I'm going to see. Yeah. I think we're going to see some very good games tonight. Yeah. Well, one of the things I'm going to touch upon very very briefly as the game is loaded up, is obviously Epsilon have played gamers too. It finished five one. I think that was about two weeks ago. So Vitality, you know, it's they could realistically drop a map against game, uh, Gamers 2. And as I said, if Epsilon wins 6-0, it's all to play for. But we're going to check out the maps for this evening, what we're going to see and the order of play. So up first, we've got Detroit Uplink. So we're going to kick it off with back-to-back -back respawns as we will then move to Solar Hardpoint. Then Millennium choosing an S&D to slow the pace down. I'm liking it thus far. Riot S&D. Map number four, Retreat Hardpoint. So back to respawns, Epsilon choice there. Then Millennium choosing Biolab Uplink. And then to finish off this series, in arguably what could be the crucial map if Epsilon are 5-0 up, Detroit Search and Destroy. So we're going to see two Detroits in this series. And, you know, I'm liking that selection from Millennium there. Putting Riot S&D bang smack in the middle of this series. It's very easy to put Riot at the very end because it is the biggest map. It is the slowest map, in my opinion, when it comes to S&D. But I'm liking that decision from Millennium. We spoke about this two weeks ago, didn't we? And I think the yeah. past two weeks we've seen teams opt for the double hard point, double uplink, double search and destroy. And yeah. it really, you've, you've been given this tactical opportunity to change the game's pace and to work things in your favor. You could start off with your best game modes to get things cooking for yourselves, give you that massive momentum that gets going for you and you know just try and pick up a map here or there afterwards or you could try and opt to have your worst game modes get them out of the way and then focus on the latter stages of the series it, there's so much to play with and how you select what's going down so it, it disappointed me to see that but it's nice to see that millennium are thinking about it they know how crucial the points are and the maps yeah. are tonight that they need to make sure they get through to next season because arguably they haven't had the strongest season. I bet they're probably thinking if we can get to next season, we'll bring everything we've got. We'll bring our guns, we'll bring our arsenal, we'll bring everything we've got behind us, the French force behind yeah. us. We just need to get there. And they're starting to think a little bit more tactically about what they want to do. Well, that's something we haven't really spoken about and I'm not going to speak about it briefly is Millennium's following is insane. If you, if you don't know about their following, Honestly, just imagine Optic Gaming in North America. Millennium are the French Optic Gaming in France. So, yeah, enough of the talking, though. 
Can Millennium live up to their fan base and make their fan base happy? We are going to jump straight into the action here with Reedy. And as you can see, he is going to be pushing all the way around here. So it looks like aggressive strategy here from Epsilon. So Reedy's just oh, going wow. straight down towards mid-street. Two players from Epsilon actually pushing down mid-street. Big kill there. And it's already 2-0 after 17 seconds. Trout, what just happened with Millennium there? Was that just a slow start or lack of concentration? Or, or what do you think? I think Epsilon completely pulled out the public cheese on them like, <laughs> that was literally something you see out of a pub game. Just run around the flank, pick up the ball, lob it into the base and score. And that was literally it. And I honestly think Millennium gave Epsilon far too much credit there. I don't think they were anticipating that. And that's yeah. exactly what happened there. Well, it was just a yeah. little bit of lack of concentration. You could argue that. But I think it was more the fact that they just overestimated how good the tactics from Epsilon were going to be. 100%. Well, to be honest with you, I really wasn't expecting that two-man push down the elbow. You know, you don't really see that all too often. So credit, I think it was rated, oh, uh, rated and Reedy. And Azox just picked up a three-piece there, so beautiful stuff from him. Carnage now picks up a kill in Malice. No, it doesn't. It just gets the assist there. But as you can see, it's 3-1 as a one-pointer has come into play. And I do believe that was Mello who hit that. But as you can see, Carnage is currently just getting that, re um, that reset control. And, you know, this is kind of what Millennium need to do. They need to get that that map control they need to literally sit on that reset but as you can see Joe is now going on the attack here can be pushing through school window but no he's gonna play a little more passively into pit should pick up this kill but 3-1 paces start to slow down now ever so slightly yeah just a little bit it was a bit of a scrappy game from the start I think Millennium were just trying to get their bearings on exactly how they managed to let those points go against them and they've managed to get control. We are arguably on the weaker side for Millennium right now, but they are yep. doing a good job of controlling the map. I think even though you are on the weaker side, it's a lot easier to control the map yourselves, even if it's not the easiest to score from. So what they're just trying to do is make sure they get those kills on the opposing team, hold the map control, get the points if they can. They do manage to get a one-pointer there and they're just playing tactically, playing smart, trying to get those points on the board for the team, doing a good job of it. They've got this map completely locked down for them. They just need to make the kills and get that ball into the portal. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, Millennium are on the worst side or the bad side, inverted commas, on Detroit. So to go 3-0 down, their heads could have dropped. They could have been like, oh, guys, you know, this is not a good start whatsoever. And they could have, you know, been in some trouble. But credit to them. They slowed the pace down, pulled out a couple more ARs, played that reset. And now it's 3-2, one point in it. And as you can see, Millennium is going to go for that 15-second delay there. And once again, Millennium got map control when you're seeing a little bit of hesitancy from Epsilon here. After going 3-0 up, they look like... They kind of surprised themselves, like, guys, we're 3-0 up. What, what do we do now? And as you can see, Millennium, they're taking advantage of it. What, now the pace is suited <laughs> to them, but now it's three down here for Millennium. And Rated is going to go on the aggression through school. And this really should be a two-pointer. Absolutely, Rated moving up the street. He's going to try and get Ooh. that throw. It doesn't work out, and the ball's going to drop down. Carnage doing a great job of just holding this top trailer if he can. Reedy and Joe getting kills back. He's just chasing the ball like a bunch of kids in the park. Mello's got the ball. He's oh, chucking a stun out just to throw him Ooh. off. He tries to go for the one point. completely taken down there. And we are on board with Reedy once again, who is just holding down this school. They want to keep hold of this school for as much as possible. It does give them the more dominant structure on the map for pushing Ooh. the actual portal. As Carnage does a great job getting those two kills. Can they get the ball in? Oh. Azox going for the dunk. Nice. He does get the dunk. It's 4-3 to Millennium right now. Marky's going to be pushing through the garage on that respawn, trying to get the reset. Oh, in fact, he's just going straight full school. I think he's going to try and go on a mad solo Ooh. run. Gets the melee kill. Can he get at least one point here? No, he's going for the dunk. And there it is. It was Millennium not really paying attention to what happened there. They got too excited, the fact they were in the lead, and it has come back to bite them in the bum as the Epsilon armor moving forward for more points. Yeah, well, Ray's just been picked off there in school steps, but Marky B solo running, hitting those punches in and around school area. Great dunk from him, but now Millennium now on the counter-attack here. Looks like it... I don't really think he's going to be able to get this one point here. No, he's just been taken out by Rated. And Reedy now has drone control. And he's going to jump straight over towards this pit area. And he should be able to pick up this kill here. No, he's just going to throw the drone. He's going to actually pre-aim this corner here. Great patience, though, from Azox. And now Millennium back in control. So, you know, this game really is going to and fro thus far. Millennium, credit to them. As I said, they bounce back. 25 seconds left of this round. But if you're Millennium Shoes, being on the bad side after round one, would you take a one-point deficit headed into the good side, round two of Detroit Uplink? Um, well, ideally, oh. you don't ever want to be on a deficit, but oh. I would say right now, it's not exactly the end of the world. It was a pretty good showing. They, I mean, obviously, they're not on the stronger side. Epsilon only managed to get one point on that stronger side, so 
for them, they're probably happy with that. They're probably happy to move forward. They hopefully will have some tactics moving into this stronger side. I think it's interesting that Epsilon actually opted to go for the... Uh, sorry, uh, opted to go for an uplink to start the game off. They've obviously seen something in Millennium's gameplay that says, I don't think they're particularly strong at uplink. Maybe we need to exploit that and get things moving in our direction before we give whatever they're going to put up. I think they, they might have anticipated that... Millennium were probably going to pick a hard point first as their, well, technically the second map overall in the series as their first map. And I think that's possibly why they've chosen the uplink if they're going to yep. give the host to them. They don't want to throw their two hard points, one of the hard point being one of their best game modes. They don't want to throw it out there straight out of the way. They want to keep that momentum in their pocket for when they do get host again. And I think that's why we're seeing an uplink right now as yep. Joe's moving forward through Garage. Yeah, well, Joe is going on the aggression. You can see three down from Millennium here and there's only one play up, but he's just been taken down here. This is going to be a dunk for Epsilon and it's now 7-4, but we keep seeing this fast start from Epsilon. However, will they fall away throughout the rest of the half like they did in the first half? I mean, yeah, they did hit one more dunk, but they got three points in the space of 40 seconds and then just kind of went a little bit quiet and Millennium did get that map control. So it'll be interesting to see if the same happens here. Another dunk though, 9-4, five point deficit. Millennium starting off these rounds just so passively, but three down for Epsilon now. Prime opportunity for Millennium to get some much needed map control, it has to be said. Absolutely, they did push someone straight away into school so they could control it as best they can. They managed to get on the app Let's get that control, and now they're pushing as a four, which is incredibly smart play from Millennium. We haven't seen too much of this from them in the Pro League so far. Oh, a nice dude didn't quite work out for them. Need to win those gunfights when they are moving forward for it. But we've got, oh, H1 going for the one-pointer there as a safe play from him just keeping the ball alive. Yeah, 100%. Well, that was a big one point that has to be said because now there's only two dunks in it. As I said, Millennium are on the good side. So if they just get some school control, which Marky B is currently blocking off, he knows exactly what he's doing on this map. He does not want Millennium to get that map control in and around school because school is the power position of Detroit Uplink, in my opinion, whether you're on good side or bad side because you can still pick off some much needed kill in and around that reset area, even if you're on bad side with Parky B. Oh, bit of a lack of concentration there. Does get a team kill. I'm sure we can let him off though. And is he going to pick it up here? No, he does get taken down. So there were two down for Epsilon. H1's going to be approaching this. Reset, but no, Rated is there, but there's a lot of trades going on right now and not a lot of movement of the drone, so to speak. Yeah, there's a delicate situation. There's ki scrappy kills being picked up and not a lot of communication as to where exactly those kills are going down or where the opposing players are. Everyone's just trying to get a little bit of intel to where everyone is, yep. and it's causing this scrappy gunfight on the Atlas box, and they don't really want to make a mistake, but unfortunately, oh, it looks like Azox moving forward wow. on that stronger side. They have got the dunk. The Epsilon lineup uh, spawning on that green side now. They need to be able to pick this ball, and they have picked it up. They're going to go into pit. They did have two men in school. Ooh. One has gone down, so it's just Mellow and one but man up. There's still one for Millennium, though, actually alive in their base. Oh, oh. that was going to be 9-9, nine, nine, but massive kills there from Reed. Big two-piece. And as you can see, three down from Millennium, but it looks like Epsilon have just played the reset rather than go on the counterattack via elbow. So, yeah, big plays here from Millennium, but what a last-ditch two-piece of that was that we saw on stream. However, Joe is not going to be running through Garage with the look of it. No, he's going for the Duke here. But you know, there's only two minutes left, so Epsilon can opt to go for this 15-second delay, and that's exactly what they've done. And that's all Epsilon need to carry on doing, yep. to be honest with you. They just need to lock down that reset, and this map is as good as theirs. But Millennium, what a start this has been. They are showing us here live on stream that they want to take at least one map. Hell, they may even push for the whole series. We may see a shocking result. We never know. But as you can see, Mello's now going to go on the aggression this through pit good. area. Ooh. But no, I think he's just been trapped in a little bit. He's now the only player up. Just throw it out, my son. Throw it out. But no, four down from Millennium. They're running out of time to get back into this, and if they can see the dunk now, they're going to be in some trouble. Yeah, it's unfortunate for them. They're actually coordinating the pushes really well. They're waiting for the opportunity. They're trying to get one kill in their favor and move forward into school. But unfortunately, once they get into school, they're just not winning the gunfights, not winning the trades. And I think that could be down to a connection thing, as Epsilon are on host right now. Yep. And I think that's potentially why they're not able to just break through and get those points oh. in their favor. H1, he should have pushed that in my view, but, you know, I suppose... That's the great thing about hindsight and being in the podcaster <laughs> mode. But Joe here, 16 and 21, so he's not having a bad game whatsoever. And as you can see, he's this. just kind of 
thing is, he doesn't need to reset it. As long as he keeps holding that drone, he's just going to delay the time. Rather than just go for 15, he's just going to try and push it for Route 30 by just holding onto it in the round pit area. But now he's going to go for that delay. And as you can see, he's the only player up right now. Millennium have got full map control. But this delay enables uh, Epsilon to get back into a comfortable position, make sure no counterattack is on, particularly through the school area. And as you can see, now two down from Millennium. It's just been a three-player swing. And now four down from Millennium. And Epsilon, they could get a one-pointer here, which would finish off this game if it's not already finished. Well, it probably is finished now, to be, let's be honest. Yep. <laughs> well, we're going to see the 15-second reset, so that's going to make it pretty much mathematically impossible for Millennium to get anything out of this. It's, it's quite smart, Joe, managing to hold on to that ball as much as possible. They got to that one-minute countdown, they're like, all right, we're just going to hold on to this ball because as soon as we see three men go down on Epsilon, if that does happen, which it didn't actually happen, we're just going to hold on to it. Joe's going to reset it as soon as he sees that everyone's down. He's going to get pushed. He did throw it out in the end, and it left them left Millennium in a situation where they basically had to go on tilt. And Epsilon were completely ready for it. They sat all defensively in school, waited for Millennium to push forward. And as a result, Epsilon managed to get three or four kills off it, and all they had to do was push forward with the ball. But they actually didn't go all the way to the ball. They just kept held on to that ball, made sure they ran down the clock, and it was very smart play from Epsilon there. Yeah, 100%, and also a 30 bomb from Rated. You can't underestimate how important kills are, particularly from a distance as well on Detroit Uplink. But Epsilon, so far so good. Mount number one. They would have liked to have been more comfortable, 100%. Obviously, 10 to 7, it could have gone either way at one point if it wasn't for a last-ditch two-piece there. I think it was from Reedy or Rated. I always get them confused. It's terrible casting from me, but it was one of them anyway. So that last-ditch two-piece, it would have all then been locked up. I think it would have been about 8-8 eight, eight there or 9-9, nine, nine, something like that. Obviously, the one-pointer would have been the difference there. But, you know, Millennium, off-host, they gave a good showing, it has to be said. So now moving on to their host, if they win this first map, they're going to get a lot of confidence, and this is the key to online Call of Duty. Obviously, connection is a big thing. However, if you get the confidence to win your maps on your own host, you could easily get a draw here. And, you know, if they do get a draw, they're essentially going to guarantee Vitality walk away with this championship. So right now, Vitality are probably watching this stream praying, saying, come on, Millennium, just take a map, take two maps, or, hell, if you get the draw... I expect the beers will be on Vitality, let's be frank about this. But obviously, we're now going to join up the Millennium game. We're now going to be moving to Solar Hardpoint, so back-to-back -back res uh, respawns. But obviously, Hardpoint, we've said it time and time again on this stream. Epsilon, they know what they're doing. They are one hell of a side. But as you can see, after we're then going to take a break, this is the Millennium choice, which I am surprised about. Maybe they just want to get it out the way, which I really don't blame them for whatsoever. You don't really want to save it to the end, I suppose. So getting it out of the way, solo hard point. Going to see a lot of anchoring in this particular map. A lot of AR control in particular. And then Riot SMD is going to be the crucial map in my view. I think that is Millennium's <coughs> big, our best chance to take a map off Epsilon. But as I've said... They can hang in respawn up against Epsilon because they've just shown that. The question is, how influential is this host going to be? It seems, I feel like it might just be a Hyper Games thing, but I usually see one of the French teams manage to take Solar Hardpoint in the dying moments of the actual series itself. It's always extremely close coming into the end hill, so I'm expecting that Millennium could, this is possibly the map that Millennium are going to be taking off them tonight. We both predicted 5-1 out of this result, and if I was going to put my money on a map that they would take, I'd probably put it on a hard point solo. It seems like a map that they're pretty comfortable with. They like it, and they do somehow pull something out of the bag in the dying moments. I mean, Epsilon, they are a very good hard point team. There's no taking that away from them. I think it'd be rude to say that they're anything but some of the best hard point players in Europe right now, but... The thing with them is, when it comes to Hardpoint, they always keep the games really, really close. They never quite put it into a stratosphere of yeah. incredible victories when I watch them play Hardpoint. At least, maybe that's just when I watch the Hardpoint. Maybe I'm a bad luck charm. But it seems to be <laughs> like, for a large majority of the game, it's only a little bit of a difference between the two teams. It's like a 20 to 30 point maximum difference between the teams at any... At a, max stage of the game but other than that it's relatively close and I, if they leave it too close especially on the Millennium host I could see Millennium suddenly holding down a hill like the Garage Hill it yep. could be the the second hill one of those hills that they managed or even the top fourth hill they managed to hold down if they pull out their, they are all of the mm -hmm. Millennium liner are proficient with the bow so I could see them locking Epsilon out of a hill for a while and bringing that deficit really quickly back and that could be why we see them just about get over the finish line into that first place yeah. position 
No, I completely agree with you. Although I'm going to slightly disagree. I'm going to say that Riot SMD is probably going to be the okay. map which Millennium takes. The French However, are good at search, so yeah, 100. percent But I completely agree with you. I think Millennium have got a great opportunity in front of them to actually win this respawn. As I've just said, they can hang on the Epsilon host on respawn. Now the question is, can Epsilon hang on respawns? on the Millennium host, and that's what we're going to see right now. It is going to be Solar Hardpoint, and we are going to jump straight into the action. And predictions going into this, are you saying that Millennium will take this map? or are you I'm not saying they will take this map. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is possibly a map they're likely to be able to take off of Epsilon. Yeah, I, I do agree, to be honest with you. But So there's only one way to find out, and that's why we're going to jump in the action. So we're going to start on board with Reedy here. And as you can see, he's just picked up the first kill in and around this ball hard point. You're not going to see a substantial lead built here, in my view, although I'm actually being proven wrong as we speak because Reedy has just got complete control of it thus far. But as soon as I say that, it is broken. And as I said, it's just going to be a lot of scrap time, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is scrap time. But if you're not very careful about how you approach this first hill, if you're all running in your singles, like Millennium seem to have done right there from the start, it's not going to end very well for you. And they basically gave away 10 points they shouldn't have done. But they have managed to equal that back up. And as you say, we're basically back on scrap time. Mello on a massive four kill streak now. If he can push into this spawn and get the... Oh, if he could have anchored those spawns, it would have been a dream start for Millennium, as they are about 10 points in the lead. Yeah, 100%. Well, I was quite interested to see Millennium didn't go for that anchor spot, which, you know, as you can see, Rated is currently anchoring like a dream thus far. He should push uh, push up towards top maps, and that's exactly what he's doing. See, he is a man after my own heart. He should pick up this kill, though. As you can see, Millennium are now going for that anchor. Carnage picks up a kill from distance, and now he's in that anchor spot. So, spawns so, so crucial on Solar Hardpoint. Same as Detroit Hardpoint, in my view, but Solar Hardpoint probably takes the cake for me. And as you can see, Joe pushes in, picks up a two-piece, doesn't pick up the third kill, but Rated is there, but Mello... Trades it up, but interesting start here. 90 seconds in and only six seconds the difference thus far. Millennium, you know, they've really got a shot of winning this map. Absolutely, they're very much still in it. We're only in the premature stages of the map so far. We've got H1 on the hard point right now, and it looks like they have managed to move the spawns over to that glass area, just as I said, Epsilon are starting to spawn at the top of the maps, and Millennium are spawning on that dirt area, but we've only got five seconds left on this hard point. Millennium are in a great position to hold down Garage hard point, which is the third hard point in the rotation of the five, and Millennium's going to push out onto Car Park. Am I right in saying that H1 is Gataga, or is H1... A pickup. I've only just noticed that. It's absolutely terrible for me. I, I think it is Gataga playing on a H1 account. I'm not sure. We will get that checked because, you know, I'm pretty sure that he started 7-6 and six and I was just noticing that he's had a great start here. So that's who we're going to jump aboard with right now. He has been tagged up and he is going to jump up top here in Garage. As you can see, Deficit. Two seconds after two and a half minutes. And, you know, Epsilon, they're going to have a fight on their hands. There's no doubt about it. As you can see, H1 the only player out thus far. But as soon as I say that, he does get taken out. However... In about 20 seconds or so, we're going to see a crucial rotation between Hardpoint 3 and Hardpoint 4 all the Ooh. way on the other side of the map, as all of you know by now, in the stream. So it'll be interesting to see which team rotates first here and which team plays for scrap time in Garage. Absolutely. Mello's just going to hold the rest of this 10 seconds and get Millennium just a little bit back into this game. It's going to be even going into the next hard point, but it's up to Millennium to make a very crucial break on this top hard point. As you said, it can be very punishing if you get a team very much set in it. Holding it down with three bows can be very, very difficult to break as Mello's pushing up this glass side with a teammate in support. They're getting the kills down, but Rated holding it strong on that glass side gets a two-piece. There is a man pushing up from maps. He is going to get the third kill of the night. Can he get the fourth one no just sponges that one azox drops the kill on him marky answers back as joe pushes onto maps he spots gataga gataga gets that kill carnage also answering back with a kill of his own mellow as well with one more marky is moving to the middle of the map gets taken down by gataga again and this is just a back and forth scrap fest yeah so we did get it checked h1 is definitely gataga so if any of you were wondering in the stream he's just playing on a different account cheeky devil but as you can see he just picks up a kill there but it's taken out from behind by reedy but kill is traded look at that feed it's just trade after trade although rated does spoil it for me, damn you. But Carnage here locking down Glass because he knows the rotation is about to come into effect, but Epsilon are in the driving seat thus far. It's about a 26 second deficit or so. But as you can see, Carnage actually can play for scrap time here, but I don't mind that strategy at yeah. all because this is the spawn that you want. However, Epsilon have broken it already here, and Millennium are now in a tight 
predicament, but Azox, as long as he goes big on rails, as soon as I say it again, cast his curse galore this evening. But Joe, he's going to be trying to anchor the better spawns going. Top glass picks up a big kill there on Carnage and keeps Epsilon in the comfortable position. However, this is only the first set of rotations, so there's still a lot of time left to play for in this hard point. However, Millennium need to pull their finger out sooner rather than later, or they could be behind by a substantial deficit, and it's very hard to come back particularly against a team as strong as Epsilon on Hardpoint. So they need to make a move, and they need to make it soon. Or this game is going to be in a position where they will really struggle to claw the deficit back. Absolutely. We're on board really right now, moving over to Glass. He's going to spot one, does get that kill. There's another one on Ring. He's going to get dropped. Mello picking up that kill on him. We're just waiting for the rotation to the middle half point. Epsilon just getting a little bit of a lead right now. It was up to about 30 points right there. Epsilon already on the rotation. Mello's going to move out into this middle. He knows one or two oh. players are on this half point. He spots one on glass, though. There is a cheeky man behind the pipe. It is Reedy right now, just lying prone. That's all he's got to do right now is just hold the points in his team's favor. And although this is usually a scrap time hill, he's doing a great job of extending that lead as much as he can for Epsilon. Yeah, 100%. Well, you know, Epsilon did struggle with that Show. rotation in and around pool. And, you know, they are in a position where they're starting to fall away from this game. And as you've already said, this is such a good opportunity for um, Millennium to actually take a map off Epsilon and say, look, we want to play for a point here. Because if they get a point this evening, they pretty much guarantee themselves safety. It has to be said. Whereas on five points, there's still a strong possibility that they could, could get dragged in to that second relegation spot. But now three down for Epsilon and Millennium on the rotation as well. So they're going to get scrap time and the early rotation. Big kill there from Azox. He's got that hill control. And as you can see, Marquis is going to be pushing in. He picks up the kill there. And Epsilon should be in control. However, Millennium... They are anchoring, so they're in a strong position to get some hill time here. Absolutely. Carnage just spotted someone in maps, did lose him, and he does pay his life for it. Rated and really locking down this B-cut area. There is going to be a man in maps. He does spot him. He is challenged by Gataga, who gets a great two-piece to break that hill. That was huge by him. Mark, he's going to answer back with another kill. Azox moving over to top Y. He does spot one man. He knows there's another one down low. He can't see him, though. Rated answers back with a kill. It's a 50-point lead to Epsilon right now. Millennium in control of the hill. Marky and co are spawning out on that dirt side. What can he make happen? No, Carnage going to challenge that with a bow. I'd like to see Carnage maybe pull out a submachine gun at some point. We're getting into an area that's a lot more tighter and close quarter action, so he needs to be able to be more versatile than using that bow. So it would be very good to see him pull out something else. Yeah, well, I'm just looking at the strategy from Epsilon there. They sent three players to challenge for 11 seconds heal time. So they are not going to let Millennium, you know, have any easy points by the look of it. And I don't blame them because obviously if Millennium were to get that scrap time, there'd only be 20 seconds or so in it, which means there's pretty much nothing in hard points, to be honest with you. So they played for that 10 seconds. They got that 10 seconds. Lead is now over 50 seconds here. And this is a crucial hard point, as we've already discussed. And... Millennium, they are running out of time here. Less than two and a half minutes left to play for. Deficit is still a tumbling. Oh, not tumbling. It's actually expanding in favor of Epsilon. Marky is going to be on top of this roof area. Picked up the first kill here. Is he? No, he's not. He's going to get destroyed there by Azox. And as you can see, Gataga here. Nine caps to his name. 28 and 24. Should pick up this kill on Marky. Yes, he does. But who's going to be the first team to rotate? Uh, rotate? It is going to be Millennium. So they're not going to challenge for the scrap time here. They're going to surrender another 10 seconds here. And now there's about 110 seconds left to play for. The deficit is just... They've literally I think got to hold these two hard points as best as they possibly can moving yeah. through this. Because as you said, 110 points left. That will just about put them into the lead that they want. They've got time to spare if they do get challenged, but it's not the most amount. And Epsilon, I think they're just going to play this very cautiously. They don't want to ruin this massive lead they've given to themselves. And Melo doing a great job yeah. of holding down that glass side. Gataga equally doing a great job on the defense, holding Epsilon out. And this is a massive amount of hill time for Millennium right now. Once again, Melo getting that kill on the glass side. And this is what I'm talking about, how Millennium managed to pull themselves back into it. Oh. Melo going huge ah. again, doesn't quite get that second one. And they are going to start to spawn out they need to get back on top of this situation right now because we're they are running out of time yeah 100 well there's now 66 seconds left to play for deficit is oh it's 
It's now, yeah, it's now mathematically impossible here. Oh. 60 seconds left. So it looks like Millennium are going to go 2 0 down in this series, and they have missed a great opportunity to take a map off of Epsilon. But this is what we expect from Epsilon ruthless aggression from them. They want this championship, and they know if they drop a single map tonight against Millennium, they may as well kiss their championship hopes goodbye in all seriousness. It will go out of their hands. So 6 0 this evening, they are going to be in a very commanding position um, headed into the final week because this is the penultimate week of the E-Pro League. If you're only just joining us, you missed a 10-7 thriller. Detroit outplank. Obviously, Epsilon did take that map. This is map number two. Epsilon going to take this as well. And map number three is going to be Riot S&D. So the pace is going to get slowed down. Final score is... It's not going to be a 250-point game, but as you can see, it is still fairly dominant for this Epsilon side. And, you know, I can understand Millennium choosing this. They just want to get... Epsilon's strongest game mode out of the way, in my view. However, next map is a crucial one for both <laughs> sides. Millennium for the relegation battle. They need to pick up a map tonight to, you know, really give themselves a little bit of a safety net, so to speak. And likewise, as we've already discussed, Epsilon need to win all maps tonight if they want to put themselves in a position where they can guarantee themselves a strong position headed in to the final week. But there we have it, folks. That is the end of the game. 40 bomb from Gataga, not enough. 11 caps and three defense to his name. So he really couldn't have done much more, but we're going to have to look down at Carnage. 24 kills there, not enough in my view. However, as we said, it's now Riot S&D. We're not very good at predicting correct scores. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, but I'm going to put the pressure on you. What's going to be the score of this S&D? Mm, uh, see, I've predicted Millennium to win a map, and <laughs> their next host is going to be an uplink on Biolab, and I know Epsilon are good at uplink on Biolab, so that's, yeah. that's a questionable... But then again, they're good at all uplink maps. They're good at comeback uplink, so actually it's probably the better one of the choice. Ignore me. Yeah. I... This has got to be the map they've got to win on. If my if my prediction is correct, I don't see them really winning the other maps. Um, so if I'm going to predict, I don't think Epsilon are that good on this map either. So I'm going to go with a six four oh. win to Millennium for this map. Took my prediction. Right, Sorry, I'm going to have to change it up. Um, I'm going to I'm going to say six five. Um, the reason I'm going to say Millennium going to win this map. Um, is, is for a couple reasons, but the main reason I'm going to say is because obviously when Vitality played Millennium, it feels like years ago now, but around four weeks ago or so, it was at the LAN event, so it was a little bit different circumstances, but the map they took off of Vitality was a search and destroy. And obviously there were no hosts involved, but this is Millennium's best opportunity. This is what I was saying to you before that last game. In my view, this is the prime opportunity. So if they don't win this map, I'm saying it's going to be a hot 6-0. And Epsilon right now, they know that. They know this is Millennium's best chance to take a map. And although it sounds really trivial, us sat here saying, you know, oh, well, one map, you know, who cares? 5-1. In this Super 6 series, it is so, so crucial. But we're now going to take a look at the maps again for you, just so you can see what we mean. So Riot S&D on the Millennium host. It is Millennium's choice. And, you know, headed to the Epsilon host, we've seen that Millennium can hang. So retreat hardpoint will be interesting. But Epsilon, they're probably too strong on hardpoint. So... You know, I'm going to put you on the spot again. If Millennium don't win this map, do you see them winning any of the maps on screen right now? They could win the hard point. Well, they could win the Search and Destroy at the end. I mean, <laughs> admittedly, the the Search and Destroy that they did win was the last map, and that could be because Vitality took the foot off the pedal a little bit for yeah, them, yeah. and maybe that's why they did it. It could be a similar situation with Epsilon tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be the case simply because Epsilon know how important every single map is to them right now. So they could win the search. I think they they're gonna win the search and destroy. If they're gonna win a map, it's got to be one of the search and destroys. That's the yep. only thing I could give for them. Yeah. Well, saying that they could hang in uplink, as you've already said. They only lost 10-7 on Detroit uplink for map number one, and that was off host. Headed to their own host. You know, you never know. They could win it. So maybe I'm being a little bit too pessimistic. I do apologize for all of you watching on stream. But now we are going to jump straight into the action. This is Riot Search and Destroy. Is this going to live up to the hype which we have built around it? Trout, who do you want to start off with? Um, oh, this is an aggressive ooh. push by Epsilon. They have been pre-naded as well. That's something I oh, like to see on Search and Destroy from the pro players. I don't see enough of it these days. And Epsilon, just with the aggression, it's not even anything tactical. It's just pure out aggression. This is the kind of plays we used to see from the French teams back in the Black Ops 2 days. 
back in the ghost days, where the aggression from them, challenging all sorts of things off the break and being a little bit daring, was something that we love to watch from the French. And it seems like Epsilon have just completely taken a chapter out of their book. I don't know what Mello was doing there. He just kind of just peeked around the corner as if he was actually looking for a bus. Like, <laughs> is there one coming now? He just pops his head out and, <laughs> no, there's no bus coming, I promise you. But as you can see on your screen, Mello just peeks around the corner. No, nope, no one there apart from Reedy, and he does pick up that kill there. And I'm so shocked that Reedy was actually able to pick up that kill. You would have heard me in the background there, rudely over-talking my co-commentator, because he was tagged up by that grenade there. I'm not really sure how he survived. But then he got a kill whilst auto-mantling from top ACs on the left to top third on the right. But obviously now headed into that second round, I am going to start on board with Rated, and he is going to go for a nade, and this is going to land on the top third. He's not going to get hit marker, though. He is going to go for a second one, though. Carnage is up there. But as you can see, it is a HBR class as well from Rated. I've only just noticed that. You're a big fan of this HBR, aren't you? I wouldn't say I'm a big <laughs> fan of it, but I, I know it's a nice little warrior gun for the online community. You won't ever see it at a LAN event because it's just not very good. But for some <laughs> reason online, like me with the AK-12, for some reason I love the AK-12 because it just yep. does work for me online. But on LAN, I wouldn't put it in its... Oh, that's not a... That's, that's a questionable move from Raid right there. Yeah, well, you know, Epsilon, their movement has been a little bit questionable at times, but they are 1-0 on the lead, so I don't think we can be too harsh. Oh. As you can see, it's 2v3. Bomb is down in favor of Epsilon right now, so they are just going to play to time. Carnage does pick up the first kill. There is a player for Epsilon. Bomb oh. security. This kill should get uh, taken out by Carnage, and now is Azox. He should have just spiked someone top third. If he goes for this defuse and Carnage moves to cover, no, he needs no, to turn no. around. Turn around, or it is going to be 2-0 to Epsilon. He's not going to turn around here. Uh, it's too late. He didn't cover his team mate and that was great play there from Joe he knew what he was doing and it's a little bit of a, out of a pantomime yeah. that was a little turn bit of a around he's behind you <laughs> well to be honest with you I can I sympathize with Carnage there right is a massive map you don't know where to look they could be your top third their top third they could be Cobby they could be benches they could be fire there are so many angles you have to watch in that predicament and he just chose the wrong angles and that's the beauty of being in Codcast mode like we are. We're in a nice warm booth, so to speak, and those guys are actually in the action. So very easy for us to say that, but Carnage probably should have checked his angles there in the Rancobi area because that is a very overused spot. But first bar does go to Joe here, and it looks like Carnage, you know, you've got the bomb. This is the second round in a row, or the second time whilst you've been on the aggression, that you've pushed in and around this security area. Does he know what he's doing, do you think? Or do you think he's just kind of... Well, yeah, just... Uh, sorry. I think oh, it's just a case of... These are the kind of... To me, when I'm watching Millennium play right now, it looks like they've gone into private games. They say, we're going to do this strat. Everyone goes here, there, and there. We're going to do this. But they've, they've come across the classic newbie competitive team problem of Search and Destroy strats where... They haven't anticipated what do you do when something doesn't go your way. What what do you do when it goes wrong? And so when Joe rushes that B side, which they probably didn't anticipate, and they lose the trade and things aren't going their way, they completely halt what they're doing. You saw it on the first round. They didn't know what to do. They sat in the bench room and got completely picked off because they didn't expect what was going to happen, and it went completely wrong for them. Yep. I like what they're trying to do. It looks like they're trying to mix things up a bit, which I don't see a lot of on Riot. It's usually just a bomb it to A and hope we can win the trades, and it looks like... An and to be fair to Epsilon, they're also mixing it up, pushing down that B side as well. But mm -hmm. it's just unlucky for them. They need a little bit more of a decision maker when it comes oh. to actually getting something going for them. The melt. The melt. This is on Millennium's host as well. The melt from Rated with the HBR. Oh, two bullet in the knee. Oh, what? no. The he melt. must have been fully red. The melt. He must have oh, been. my God. I'm starting to agree with you. This HBR is disgusting online. Wow. It's... You know, I'm, I've never been a big fan of this HBR when I've casted it before. I was like, guys, you know, kind of put it away. Look at this. Just must look at this kill cam. Oh, oh, wow. Is that a headshot? He must have been so, so weak for that to happen. But I saw a two bullet as well just before that when I was saying melt before yeah. that. Two bullet in the knee. And that guy definitely was not weak. However, 4-0 now in favor of Epsilon. You just ignore everything I've said building up to this. I'm completely wrong by the look of it. Epsilon right now are in cruise control. They don't even look like they're sweating it too much. They don't look. Like they, they don't look like they're even using comprehensive strats. They're just like, right, let's just push in, pick up a kill, and then drop done. And you know, it is very primitive S and D. But first blood does go in favour of Carnage. So could this be the start of the fight back, or are Epsilon just too strong off host? 
We are on board rated who's in the middle of the map. Let's see what's going on with the Millennium Gang right now. They have managed to get two kills on the board for themselves. They've left rated in a 3v1 situation. This is everything for him to play for right now. Green is going to get spotted. He doesn't win that trade. And finally, Millennium are going to save their team from a donut. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> As he does manage to pick up that kill. Yeah, well, th that was a big round for Millennium potentially. As if they would have gone 5-0 down, it would have been GG's, rest in peace. Down and dusted. It would have been 3-0. Absalom would have guaranteed themselves at least a point. And I'm sure they're really not playing for at least a point, trust me. But as you can see, Mello there did get, uh, did get the kill cam. He was on a bagel or a donut, whatever you want to call it, just beforehand. But now he's dropping that breadstick. And, you know, Millennium just need to drop a few more kills. But look at the carry here from Joe right now. 7-2 and two over double the amount of kills of any of his teammates thus far. And it looks like he's playing... Ultra aggressive here. He is using dead. Uh, I think that's Exo Mew and Overclock as well. So two Carnage. Exo abilities. But as you can see, big two piece there from Carnage. Big trade though from Rated. Shame we didn't see that, but it's not. It was a four v two. Oh, that's bomb as well. Yeah, and there we go. Joe is now in a one v three. He's just been spotted here. Surely, no, he hasn't. Wow, how has he not been spotted? Joe playing so patiently. I'm liking this. But if he gets spotted, he's in a world of trouble. Oh. He has been spotted. Aww. That's it. That's the trouble of being too patient, but back-to-back -back rounds here for Millennium. That's more like it from them. Yep, they're making some more decisive plays this time. They're making things work for themselves. They know what they're doing. They're being a little bit more confident in their movement and how they're playing the map. Don't know how he looked in that spot at least twice and missed him the first time, but did spot him eventually in that one. I, I, I want to see a little bit more promise from Millennium in terms of their commitment. I don't think they've been... In the initial rounds, they didn't seem committed to what they were doing enough, and I want to see them be a little bit more aggressive. The old French flavor that we used to see in Search and Destroy, I want to see that come back out and see what they've got to do. We're going to see Gataga go for the pre-nade very, very early, but he's not going to spot anyone because they oh, have rushed completely oh. on A Street. Marky wins that gunfight with the help of some teammates. Oh, oh and there's Carnage a fire again. battle going on there. Carnage with the two Bs, and that's going to give Millennium free reign on that B bomb site because Epsilon are completely on the other side. Well, to be honest with you, Epsilon, I'm liking the strategy to an extent because it works for them. Every time they've been on defense, they tend to push that A site and they tend to win the round. So I don't mind that strategy at all. However, it got a little bit predictable for Carnage and it looked like there was a breakdown in oh. communication uh, from Epsilon. It was just an easy two-piece for Carnage. However, it's now a 2v2, but Millennium are, oh, well, no. they're not in a strong position anymore. It's now a 1v2. Azox needs to be Oh, he doesn't pick up that kill. Marky goes big there and it is going to be 5-2. They're going to stop this momentum that was building in favor of Millennium. It's now 5-2. However, you touched on this before this game even kicked off. Last week, Epsilon got sloppy. They were in a commanding position on an S&D, and they choked. Could we see the same again here? Will it be in the back of their minds, do you think? No. <laughs> no, I agree. Epsilon, I agree. No, they know how to put that kind of... Uh, monster to bed, but and just watching the Millennium set up on that bomb site was just mm -hmm. not good enough. Like they didn't have everything checked. They lost the gunfights. They shouldn't be losing as well. I don't know what Carnage was looking at. I know he was in a tough spot. He's got to look up and he's got to look to the side if he's coming around the back uh, from basketball court. But you need to get yourself in a better position. You're not in a nice position. You, he had cover from the back as well, so he could have moved without having to worry too much about being shot in the back. We've got rated on the bomb right now. Just, he's actually going to go for the plant. Carnage needs to check this, but he's obviously oh, got support. Marky. Marky's going to pick that one, and Mello trades a kill. Mello in a 1v4. He's been tagged up, and that is map done and dusted. Great plays there from Epsilon. They did have two rounds where they just kind of went to sleep, it has to be said. However, Millennium, that's all she wrote. And to be honest with you, that is it's a shame to see that from Millennium. It's now 3-0 in favor of Epsilon. You can see the hunger from Epsilon, it has to be said. This is off post, which is something else we have to emphasize here. So, you know, Joe finishing 9-3 and three there. Great game from him. However, Millennium, not good enough on their own house. Now a host. Now we move back to the Epsilon host to a hard point as well. This is surely going to go in Epsilon's favor. And that means that Millennium's best chance now is probably going to be the uplink when they move back to the Millennium host. But saying that... I Epsilon. thought they played better on Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Epsilon, they seem to be having a whale of a time. I'm looking at the scores. Sorry for being rude and not looking at you guys, but rated, you know, 4 and 4. Okay, fair enough. Reedy, 3 and 5. Fair enough. However, Joe and Marky, 9 and 3 and 8 and 6, respectively. So, looks like they're fairly comfortable off host. And 
comparing that to Millennium, Carnage, yeah, eight and five. He played very, very well there. But the rest of the players from Millennium all finished neg. Azox over double neg, three and seven. Mellow, three and six, double neg there. And Gutaga, four and six. So, bit of a shame there for the Millennium fan base, it has to be said. However, it's still possible for Millennium to take a point from this series. We're going to have to be very optimistic, 100%. However, do you see Millennium winning a map now, or do you think that this has just got Hot 6 so written all over it? I think that Millennium could win this hard point if they improve their setups. I w yeah. I'll talk a bit more about it um, before the map actually starts, but their setups just haven't quite been crisp enough, and yeah. their decision-making on how they want to play the map hasn't been the best, but... I don't know. I think it's going to be up to them. They have the ability to do it, and they need to be able to do it. But we're going to throw to a quick commercial break before that map starts. It's going to be hard point retreat. It is 3-0 to Epsilon right now. And Millennium's future in the Pro League, well, the premiership of the Pro League, could be hanging on by a thread. Are yeah. they going to be able to do it? We'll have to find out after the break. Hello and welcome back to the Gfinity European Pro League. It's 3-0. Epsilon. Yeah. Millennium. Epsilon in the driving seat. Really, really strong performance from them. They are fighting for that championship spot. On the other side of the coin, Millennium fighting off that relegation spot. Yeah. And um, we've just had a bit of a score update as well whilst we went for a six-minute intermission, which was beautiful, by the way. Um... Hyper Games 1, VWS 1. It's a bit of a surprise in my view. VWS, I had it down as a 6 nail to Hyper Games, so probably a little bit too harsh on my front. Vitality 3, G2 nil. So that is big, and we will talk about that a little bit in a second. Infused 1 over gaming nil. I think there's a little bit of delay in that game, so there's only been one map played thus far, but I expect Infused to wrap that up fairly comfortably. And one thing we have forgot to mention, and this is kind of on the outskirts of thing, but depending on results today, we could see the first relegation of this EU Pro League. I believe if Overgaming lose today and VWS uh yeah, VWS win their game, then we will no nah, VWS win their game and Millennium get a point, then it will be Overgaming definitely relegated, I if I'm not mistaken. I, unless it's just Millennium that groups, needs a point. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Just if be, if yeah. Overgaming lose, VWS just have to not lose by yeah. a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and Millennium need to pick up a point. So I don't think we're going to see Overgaming relegated thus far, and we just have had another score update. It's now Vitality 4, G2 nil. So it looks like they are going ham, but we are now going to take a look at the rest of the maps remaining of this Epsilon Millennium series. It's been a cracker so far. Epsilon, three maps in succession, 3-0 up in the lead. Hearing the results obviously coming through, Epsilon are probably well aware that it is now 4-0 in favor of Vitality. So now the pressure is on them more than ever. They need this series and they need it 6-0. So hardpoint retreat. We've spoken about your predictions already. We've spoken about my predictions already. Have you had a change of heart in the intermission or do you think that this may as well be done and dusted? I think Millennium can pull something out of this if they've got the setups. Now, the problem with their hard point on... The the first time round is their setups just weren't good enough. For example, I saw a moment where 
Mello actually did the right thing. He ran straight through purple into the middle of the map. And this is on the start of the second rotation. Epsilon had someone lying on the pipe, so they had that B cut covered. They had someone sitting on top glass, so if anyone came up Glass Street, he'd spot them. If they had someone coming from the middle of the map, he would be spotted out. They had someone sitting on the opposite in the corner of glass as well. Yep. So their setups have just been far superior to Millennium's. And Millennium's, they've always been fighting and scrapping over hills. They haven't been anchoring properly. They haven't yep. been setting up properly. They had a good couple of moments where they got things to click for them, but that's the problem for them. It seems like they just want things to automatically click for them, and when they don't, they don't have a plan B. And I, I want to... I, I love Carnage to bits, but I, I want to you know, point him out here that he seems to be the only guy I know who hasn't quite adapted to using a submachine gun. We didn't... I yep. don't think I saw it on any of the game modes where he pulled out a submachine gun. And in Call of Duty now, you need to be versatile about how you play the game. You need to be able to pull out a submachine gun. We saw Swanee and Ghost. He struggled for quite a while with the fact that he's he's been AR dominant the entire yep. Call of Duty career that he's had. He had to get used to the fact that he had to pull out a submachine gun because they were just far better in the meta, even if he yeah. wasn't comfortable about how he had to use it and how he had to play with one. He's adapted to it. Marky e. B, who was predominantly an AR in Black Ops 2, had to find his way into using a submachine gun in Ghost as well. Yeah. And I want to see Carnage to pull out a submachine gun because there are just hills on this map, on this game, where ARs don't work. They just will not work. I mean, online you can kind of get away with it because of the connection and because of how if you play well enough and you've got things rolling in your favor, you can get away with it. But I, he needs to be able to pull out some machine gun. There were too many times on that first half point I saw him in a situation where he should have been pulling out a submachine gun especially when your team are struggling to be able to break that hill he needs to be able to get in there and help them break it yeah well this is oh I thought it was gonna be a great start here from Millennium as they went to go for that full flank to get the better spawns in and around Dub's area however Epsilon just too strong I'm not really sure what happened there on Carnage's screen in his mind he just saw a player and just maybe he's listening to me. He, he, like, he might be saying Trout, that. You talk that so Trout. much sense, yeah. you dreamboat. <laughs> but as you can see, Marky currently flawless thus far, four and zero, and he's going to just duck in and out of that hill. But he's just being taken out, Caster's curse. As always, Azox on a breadstick thus far, one and three should get taken out here. No, he's not. He actually picks up a big kill on Rated. He's going to pick up the second kill. No, he's not here. But you know, first hill, you're not going to learn an awful lot. Second hill. You know, we are going to see a lot of AR dominance come out in my view, but then headed into the third hard point in and around lobby area, then we're going to see. Then we're going to see the sub switches. So it'll be very interesting to see how that unfolds. But Epsilon first on the rotation, Millennium. They're not making it easy for themselves. It has to be said. No, absolutely. And this map's quite a tricky one to play when it comes to how you set up with your gun battles. I like to play this game, this map in twos. You have one sub machine gun and one AR work together. The sub pushes out those tight corridors, and the AR gets something. So if you were pushing wall, you'd have the sub machine gun go up there and challenge anyone sitting on the wall, and then the AR gets up there and slays anything that he can spot out to allow that submachine gun to push forward in that open space because it is very hospital situations for both players in this map so they have to be able to coordinate and work together and it looks like Epsilon just doing a far better job of doing that. Yeah 100% well Azox just been taken out in the round lobby area. Carnage though the player which you called out before this game side. Two and seven ouch not a great score to be seen thus far already and as you can see speaking of bad scores for you Millennium fans, it's now 48 to 8 after the first two hard points. So a substantial lead has started to get built. As you can see, Kataka was on the hill, but Joe is going to be pushing Azox. Should, oh, should pick up this kill here. I'm not really sure what noise I made there. Apologies for that. Reedy, though, is going to be pushing in from Paul's side. He's going to stun that hard point there. But as you can see, he's not going to be making a push just yet. But as soon as I say that, picks up the first kill. And look at that. Three down for Millennium already. Epsilon just moving as a unit. They're not pushing into hills individually. They're waiting till every player is in position and then literally just crushing the opposition, trapping the opposition in the hill. And that is not easy to do, especially on a hill with four entry points like this lobby hard point. But Trout, what are your thoughts early on into this game? Millennium, they are going to try and claw this deficit down ever so slightly, but we're headed into the crucial hard points. Is there a way back for Millennium? There's definitely a way back for them. They just need to work better. I'm surprised this score hasn't gone more heavily in Epsilon's favor. Yeah. 
Carnage is, he needs to pick up his game a little bit. He seems to be the main AR for Millennium, so he needs to step up his game a little bit more and be able to slay down as much as he can and hold those spawns for them, which I imagine is why they're actually in a position of power for themselves. As we see a score update there, VWS 2, Hyper Games 1. I was wow. not seeing this. Well, the thing is, it's something we will talk about after this game. It's a VWS win tonight, and um, depending on results, Millennium could actually drop into the relegations. Actually, VWS could actually go above G2 and Millennium. So VWS, if they pull off that victory, that could arguably be the upset of the EU Pro League. But enough of that other game. Let's focus on this game as it's all to play for. Azox was AFK there for a second, 11 and 14 thus far, anchoring those spawns for Millennium thus far and doing a relatively good job of it. However, he's being pushed right now and he's being taken out by Marquis, who is using a sub, as you touched on earlier, picks up a three-piece, in fact. And I was just about to switch to him, but Carnage actually has pulled out a sub as well. So it looks like both sets of players have been listening to you, and it looks like Carnage is taking inspiration from your words. 11-second deficit now. That was a massive hard point for Millennium. However, can Epsilon go big in this attic hard point? Absolutely. We see a score update there. Infused 3 no up against Overgaming Club. No real surprises there. It looks like Overgaming Club are going to possibly be the first team to face the wrath of relegation. But as you were saying just before that score update came up, it's nice to see Carnage pull out a submachine gun. It's nice to see teams try and switch it up. I mean, there is a meta, obviously, in the game and a preferred setup. But if things aren't working for you in the way it goes, don't be afraid to switch it up. I hate teams who just sit there and will just keep recycling the same strategy until eventually it works. Because eventually you're going to run out of time. Or it's just not going to work. Why don't you switch it up, try and change the guns, try and change your approach. Um, push forward and it seems that Millennium are starting to get something out of it but Epsilon are just playing so well right now it doesn't look like their efforts are quite being rewarded. Yeah 100% well Millennium that was a sloppy team kill from Gataga there and that will cost Millennium scrap time in my view but now headed back to that first hard point in and around mid map area. Joe is actually flanking for those better spawns just spotted a player from Millennium in and around house picks up the first kill and picks up the second kill no he's not he's gonna get taken down here by Gataga by the look of it. And as you can see, Rated has got those better spawns. He's using an AI. He should jump top dubs here. No, he's not. He's just going to head camp this mid-map area. And, you know, deficit is starting to come down again. However, that attic hard point was a big one for Epsilon. But this equally could be a big hard point for Millennium. But great strategy here from Rated. He's just going to play it slowly. Play That's that contest spot. time. But Carnage picks up a two-piece with a sub again. So your advice looks like it is working wonders for Carnage. He was two and eight at one point in this game, and now 15 and 22, still neg seven, but is clawing back those stats, so to speak. But headed back into the total hard point, Millennium, first set of rotations, they just weren't good enough. Let's see if they learn from their mistakes. Absolutely, I was, uh, you pointed out that method from Rated where he just jumped in that corner, I like that. That's actually a spot I tend to go to quite a lot when I'm playing retreat hard point, because it is very difficult. It's almost like a suicide yep. uh, moment if you do run out into that hard point. So. He would notice that his team were trying to respawn up and get into position for him, so he just held out the the contestment on that hill. And being in the lead, that's all they needed to do. And it was a very good play from Epsilon. But having said that, Millennium equally with the good plays right now. Azox holding this attic right now as Epsilon is trying to make the breakthrough. They need to push in their numbers, wow. which they haven't been doing. And because of that, they spawned way out onto Big Rock. And they're pushing up this swimming pool half as Millennium are going to tie the game up. Wow. Azox right now, his positioning is at absolutely perfect. He is making this hard point so easy for his team. He did get a bloodthirsty, but he locked down Top Attic to absolute perfection, essentially trapping Epsilon into those worst spawns. Massive, massive plays from Azox. We've got to highlight that. And as you can see, Katarga is now pushing that lobby area. Rotation just about to come to effect, but Millennium are in the lead That's here it. off host. Much better stuff from Millennium, and it all started with Azox being a machine. But Epsilon, we saw in the last set of rotations that they had a great hard point in around lobby. Saying that, they had a great turtle hard point as well. So let's see if Millennium can learn from them, uh, learn from the mistakes again here, or if Epsilon can just shut down this momentum. But as you can see, Mello pushing into that hard point here. He's pushing out here. He does pick up a kill there. One bullet there on Marky B, but he should pick up this kill here. He does pick up that kill there. So Millennium. 
Looks like they're just pulling form out of nowhere, to be honest they're, with you. They're oozing confidence wow. now. Carnage is getting kills. Azox is going absolutely ham right now. Gatarga is doing exactly what Gatarga does. Ooh. The French monster and Mello is holding it down for his team. And the confidence is back in the life of Millennium. They could easily get the maps back if they try and move together and push as a unit. And that is exactly what they did on those past hills. They got the setups completely correct. And they got themselves back in this game. Epsilon just trying trying to get a couple points off that last hard point as he move into this one. Reedy wow. with the Dukes there for the two-piece, but he's going to get followed up by Azox. Now Millennium are spawning on that jungle spawn. Rated trying to stay alive and see if he can keep this contestment going as long as possible. These two kills are crucial on this map because if you don't get many points from this second to last hard point, it can be very disastrous for that last hard point. But having said that, it's not all over because it is very easy to lock a team out once you get it done. Yeah, well, Millennium did make that early move to anchor the better spawns as you can see Joe picks up a two piece in and around that bar hard point now deficit is in around 25 seconds so Millennium will have to make a move here even though Millennium do have better spawns here they're not pushing the hard point they're not getting the hill time and it has enabled Epsilon to actually build their lead to over 30 seconds so actually Millennium shot themselves in the foot they were so scared to drop the, uh, the favorable spawns that they actually forgot to push the hard point however 30 seconds in it 55 seconds left to play for. Millennium oh. still mathematically possible here. However, Epsilon be quick. are on the rotation here. Marky is on that hard point. Reedy on that hard point. Guitar be pushing straight through here. Can he pick up one kill? No, he's not. He took too long. Four down for Millennium. That is surely it, and it will be it. Epsilon hold on by the skin of their teeth, but Millennium showing a game. They can hang in respawn off host. And it's, it's quite... You know, it's frustrating to see, to be honest with you. But Marky picking up a two-piece there. He's just dropped a 40 bomb. Only player in the lobby to drop 40 kills. And he's... You know, we haven't really spoken about Marky a lot this series. But, you know, he just pulls out performances like these just out of nowhere. He's such a solid player, a very smart player. And that's exactly what you expect from your leader. But Melo also dropping a 40 bomb for Millennium. Big game from him. Carnage as well, 30 and 39, he was neg 9, but there were times in that game where he was just being pretty much a legit beast, it has to be said. But final score, 212 to 160, map count now 4-0 in favour of Epsilon. We'll try and get a, a couple more um, score updates for you, but as you've heard in that game there, current scores are VWS 2, Hyper Games 1. Huge shock that, to be honest with you. Vitality 4, G2 nil, and Infused 3 over gaming nil. Now, in between this session, I do want to try and pull up the lead table at some point because I just want to highlight how crucial map difference could be to Millennium right now. They are 4-0 down and they cannot let their heads fade out. They can't think, oh, I'm just going to go down to the kitchen, have some food. I don't really care because if they do that, you know, they'd be letting their fan base down because if you'd expect a team like Millennium and their, you know, general support and their image generally, You'd expect them to be in the top league of Europe. And right now, you know, I'm going to try and pull up the league table in just a few seconds here. But, you know, if it's, if results don't go in their favor and if it carries on turning into a rout with this Epsilon fixture, they could be in the bottom two headed into the final week. And if VWS beat Typer Games, you would expect them to then beat Millennium, surely, wouldn't you? Absolutely. I mean... I don't, I'm not really sure what's going on. I, I suppose it's got something to do with the fact that they are playing with a non-regular player. I mean, their their actual fourth carbon is isn't able to play in the league because he's yeah. not 18 uh, years old. But yeah, so it could be that problem. But overall, it just seems like the the t the, the chemistry is just not there. I mean, I. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened in that. The game was pretty much tied up, and on that second to last hard point, things just didn't go the way they needed to. I don't. Maybe it's it's a problem that they needed more AR pressure. I think that although I did say that Carnage needs to pull out a submachine gun a little bit more. Yeah. I don't think I. Th I'm pretty sure he stayed with the submachine gun on that hard yeah. point as yeah, well, which did, is yeah. possibly it, it's not the hard point you want to be throwing submachine guns at. You're basically throwing lambs to the slaughter at that point. It was just Azox trying to hold that down with one AR. When really, I would say for that hard point, if you're coming up against a team like Epsilon, who are extremely aggressive, you can exploit that and pull out a second AR yeah. and slay down as much as possible. Had they done that, they would have kept that game completely in their control. And then there was this point where two it was a 2v2 situation between the, the two teams. And uh, 
it makes it complete. What I'm about to say just sounds completely weird, but mm-hmm. they would have been better off not killing people on that hard point. And I say that because they would have spawned out on to that next hard point because yeah. by making those two kills that they did on that last hard point, I wouldn't be surprised if Epsilon let them do that because they noticed that their guys were on the rotate and by doing getting those two kills, the two Epsilon players spawned with their team and all four of them flooded that hard point, which is why I said they needed to be quick on this movement after they got those two kills because if they're not careful, their whole team's going to be set up in there, they're going to be locked out and that's it. That's the end yeah. of the game and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you, to be honest with you. I mean, Millennium really did miss an opportunity with that hard point. They went so big on Turtle hard point in the second set of rotations, they actually got a 15-second lead, which I was like, wow, Millennium, where's this come from? And then all of a sudden, headed into bar hard point, they were so orientated on spawns, which is such a slippery slope to get trapped in, to be honest with you. There's always that dilemma when it comes to hard point and anchor maps where you think, right, what's more important? me being on the outskirts anchoring spawns or me pushing in and trying to get hill time and unfortunately millennium on that occasion made the wrong decision and i think they should have been a little bit more ballsy so to speak they should have been a little bit of uh, should have had more risk to their game or taken a bit of a risk so to speak but we've just had another score update here it's five nil two vitality against gamers two and i find that a little bit of a shock to be honest with you because I thought Gamers 2 might take an early map on their own host. But Vitality, if they win this sixth map, they are in... You know, they're in a dream uh, position right now. Yeah, they're they pretty much untouchable, and it's, it's absolutely insane. But we're going to take a look at the maps, and hopefully just after we will have a brief look at the league table as well. But up next, we've got Biolab Uplink and S&D Detroit. Now, we've already seen four maps. If you've just joined us on the stream, wow, where have you been? Detroit Uplink finished 10-7 in favor of Epsilon. Hardpoint went in favor of Epsilon at 242 to 186. It was a fairly close game apart from when it got to the final hardpoint, in all seriousness. The Riot s and everything just went wrong for Millennium to be honest with you and then that map we've just seen on stream you know they kind of almost played too sub orientated because the thing about great players and great pro players is that they will switch classes all the time in between games depending on the hard point some hard points particularly on solar some hard points just need to, need to get a bow pick up people from a distance, particularly that fourth hard point on solar you know just change it up from a sub in and around garage change it to a bow and just know when to change Carnage, in particular, started off with a bow. It didn't work for him. So went, right, I'm just going with the sub. And it did work to him, uh, work for him to an extent. Well, really but well. that just left one player from Millennium with a bow, if I'm not mistaken, on retreat. On a lot of hard points on retreat, particularly the first hard point, the second hard point, and the fifth hard point, in my view, maybe even the fourth hard point. It's only really the lobby hard point where you need a lot of sub action. But, you know, did Carnage make a mistake? Yes. However, I don't think he cost him that game. I think it was just generally a poor team performance on that bar hard point with regards to not pushing yeah. in and getting the hill time. But saying that, all teams make mistakes. We are headed into Biolab uplink. Once again on the Millennium host, we keep saying this. This is a great opportunity for Millennium to take a map off Epsilon. And by the look of it, it is going to finish 6-0 to Vitality against G2. And if it finishes 6-0 and Epsilon drop even one map tonight, to be honest with you, I'd say that's their championship hopes done and dusted, unless infused pull out I think, uh, a miracle. I think uh, uh, I do think Vitality are going to win that, but I don't think it's going to be a six nil whitewash against Infuse. I think Infuse are going to take at least a map yeah, off agreed. of Vitality. So if Epsilon can hold still and get the six nil done, and they can pull out the six nil next week, that does put things in even contention. If it, if if it, if Vitality won 5-1, yeah. it would be even. If they won 4-2, it would be in Epsilon's favor. Yeah, well, if G2 win this next map and Vitality win that series 5-1 and Epsilon wins 6-0, both teams will be on plus 20 map difference. That'd be headed the best into the way final week. Headed into the final week, though, Epsilon up against Overgaming. 6-0. Surely going to be a 6-0. I'm sorry, you Overgaming fans. It's going to be a 6-0 in my view. Epsilon just too strong. Overgaming are at the bottom of the league table for a reason, in my view. So let's just say 6-0 to Epsilon, which means that's on 26 map difference. Vitality up against Infused is... Do you know what I mean? It's, you're guaranteed a map for Infused, in my view. It would take a monstrous performance from, from Vitality to win 6-0, or a monstrous performance, on the other hand, for Infused if they just don't turn up whatsoever. So even if it finishes 5-1 in favour 
of Vitality there. Epsilon, if they win 6-0 against Overgaming, will be your champions. But if it stays how it... I think it's going to stay, and it's going to be a 6-0 in, in favor of Vitality to uh, up against G2, uh, then it will be a plus 2 map difference in favor of Vitality, which means they will then have an opportunity to drop two maps next week against Infused. So it's such a big performance from Vitality. We haven't seen how it's gone, but G2, if you're watching right now, Epsilon are praying for you to take a map because if you do, they essentially put themselves in a position where they are, you know, they should win a championship. As you can see, plus 14, plus 16, and Vitality, they would got to plus 22. Epsilon would got to plus 20. Next week, if, uh, let's say, that Vitality win 4-2, they would still actually have the same map difference as if Epsilon had won 6-0. So the only way Epsilon would actually be able to win the league, if I'm not mistaken, is if Infused draw against Vitality next week. But it's all to play for right now. We're assuming so many t uh, things at this stage. By about Plink, we are going to jump into this game. Can Millennium win a map up against pretty much a god squad in Epsilon, it has to be said. They are arguably the best team in Europe right now with their land performances and whatnot. But let's see if they can defeat Millennium here and try and wrap up this series sooner rather than later because the more they hear about other scores coming in, oh god, Vitality winning 5-0, 6-0, whatever, the more pressure that builds on Epsilon. They just want to get these out over and done with. They want to be in a position where they can kind of relax. But as you can see, big kill there from Mello in and around Ice. And headed into this, Trout, are you optimistic for Millennium? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I think they're probably quite dejected right now. But to, to me, there's no... I think they're probably aware that there's no real way that maps could... Oh, that's just unlucky from there. He tried to go for the pass and it just hit that block right there. Mm. Oh, and Joe's going to lay the smack down and he's going to go for the rotate and Millennium are not going to be in a position to stop this and this is most likely going to be 2-0 to Epsilon right off the bat. A Ooh, yeah. series of unfortunate go. events for Mill Millennium right now and that seems to be the theme of their evening right now. They've just been so unfortunate in a number of occasions and I don't think Millennium really have the strategies fully down uh, at this point in time and you can't be expecting to get much against arguably the best team in Europe you can't be expecting to go in with a, a pretty much a pickup and expect to I'm saying expect too much I apologize but you can't realistically think you're gonna get much out of a result against them no I agree with you and you know this was the trap which Millennium were falling into the first time we saw them on uplink slow starts Sloppy starts, lack of concentration in the early moments of the game. And now Joe is on the wraparound here. Four up for Epsilon as well. Four up for Millennium. This should be a dunk though, and it is going to be another dunk in favor of Epsilon here. One, uh, three and a half minutes left to play of round number one. Could we see a 10 point round? It, oh, to be honest with you, I'm going to answer my own question. We will see a 10 point round if Millennium do not wake up and pull their finger out. But the positives for Millennium here. They are trying to do something. Both dunks for Epsilon have been on the counter-attack. There's some positives to take out of that, in my view. Uh, yeah, I can agree with that. I think that they're on a major tilt at the moment. They are, If you don't know what I mean by tilt, it basically means when you're just all-out all attacking, all-out aggression, you're just throwing caution to the wind, you're doing whatever you need to do that is going to hopefully get you a point. It's the most ballsy kind of play that you can make but it's a high risk high reward kind of strategy and for them at the moment it is just very much high risk yeah <laughs> there's 100%. no reward so far for what they've been doing and i think that's kind of the way it's going for them but having said that they have got two points on the board while i was talking and we were talking so yeah. they, there is some sort of reward to what they've been doing. They just need to keep it up. And unfortunately for them, they are on the weaker side. So 2-4 going into the weaker side is not too bad. They made two mistakes, which led to two dunks, which is unfortunate. But once Here we again... Go. It's going to be 6-2 now. So Millennium there got, uh, putting the awkward spawn in and around Orange Tunnel. Big kill there from Joe. Joe can just lock in the spawn trap, and he is going to be happy as hell, to be honest with you. He's not really going to want to push anything whilst he's got control of Vibe. But as you can see, he is going to push this blue cut area. He's going to actually jump on top of Big Crane Air, and he's going to turn back around. Should we get this kill? Oh, absolute melt kill there on Mellow. And as you can see, Marky here should get this done. This should be easy. Epsilon just set up perfectly, to be honest with you. 8-2 now 
just over 90 seconds left to play of this round. Millennium, it's not looking good for you Millennium fans right now, or even the Millennium players, to be honest with you. Rated now on the drone. Can go for the one-pointer, is going to go for the one-pointer, will hit the one-pointer. 9-2. Honestly, is there anything that's going to stop Epsilon in this game? No, they are just one of the best uplink players, uh, uplink teams in Europe right now, and they've got the perfect setup they could possibly want. Rated is on that long, that short green train. Ooh. They're just relaying it, but that is a naturally, that is a good interception for Kataga right now. He's going to try and go all the way round and see if he can get in a good position. Unfortunately, he does drop the ball right there. Rated outside, bottom blue. He does get tagged up by a Millennium player, and he's going to duck ooh, out of there. He spots someone in nice. Oh, oh. oh Mello just gets that kill. He's not going to have that one today. Reedy is in possession of the ball right now. Is he going to go for the simple one point? It looks like he's gone for it. I think it has missed, unless he's dropped it for someone else to pick up. And it looks like Joe is moving into blue. He has spotted someone going around the outside. He is going to pick up that kill. Look for another one. He has pulled out that bow. Spots Carnage on the run behind him. Not going to happen today for Carnage. He's just not having the best of luck in tonight's game, unfortunately for him. Joe is on a rampage right now. And he is going to pick up the ball as most of the Millennium Man are dead. It looks like we have got someone. It is rated again on that green crane. Just playing him out. Simple one point bro, 10 points and four minutes 45 for Millennium to come back into. I think Epsilon did take their foot off the gas there towards uh, uh, the end of that first round in uplink, but saying that 10-2 headed into round two of Biolab, you'd take that all day long. So Joe there finishes off the round, puts Millennium out of their misery for that good side slash bad side, whatever you want to call it. And you know, Millennium, they've got it all to do right now. This looks like it will be 5-0 in favor of Epsilon, so they will draw level with um, Vitality, who are 5-0 in the lead as we speak. So interesting to see both teams compete, even though they're not competing against each other. And as you can see, Joe is going to be pushing this top purple area. Should pick up a kill in purple outskirts. He doesn't. Azox goes big with the covering there. And as you can see, Marky's now going to pick up the drone. And do you think this is now going to be a 20-point game for Epsilon, or do you think they're just going to take their foot off the gas ever so slightly? Um, they're probably going to have fun. I mean, we saw what was the game that I saw them playing in. They brought out the the Lynx Iron Sights and just started. All four of them brought it out. It was, it was against Nexium at um, the land in Blackpool where... They all brought out lynxes <laughs> and just started trolling, basically. So I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if we start seeing a bit of that. I mean, that well, we could not. They might take it completely seriously because there is quite a lot of money on the line. They know that yep. if they do drop a map, it could be all lights out and Millennium could come back into it in some freak way. I don't see that happening. But, uh, well, as I said, that Mellow does get that one point. And they are on the stronger side now. So yep. they could just keep re relaying those single one pointers if they're smart about it. Yeah, particularly the one point spot on Big Crane is such an OP spot. If you've just got one player, watching over you in blue cut in particular it's fairly simple to relay over and over and over again but it looks like epsilon have already broken that control so millennium they just kind of set up just for that one pointer they didn't actually look beyond that but as you can see marky now pushing purple outskirts gets around this corner goes into bio he is so weak right now but he is on for this one point he's gonna eat even more bullets how weak can you be marky b and as you can see it's gonna be a dunk my goodness what a dunk that is from Marky. He could not have been weaker. He had blood coming out of everything, and I mean everything. 12 to 3 now. Three minutes left to play, and that's the difference between these two sides. Individual moments of genius, but compare that to Millennium. You know, although they've got consistency with kills, they're not doing anything special. They're not actually making these uplink runs. They're not you know, playing overly aggressive, but now Rated going on the wraparound and now changing his mind, and I don't blame him for changing his mind whatsoever. Don't risk it. If you go for the wraparound, the counter-attack is always feasible for the opposition. So it's going to say top purple, launch it. Oh, no, he's actually not going to launch it into the base. He's just going to go for that 15-second yeah, delay. And yeah, you can't blame him whatsoever for that. They want to play safe. Absolutely. Very smart play for them. Just run that clock down a little bit more. Get themselves set up. They had no idea where Millennium was spawning. They, I think they were probably expecting them to come on the flank, and they weren't in the best position. So uh, we're 12-3 up. Let's just reset it and yep. reset ourselves, get into a good position. Joe's just going to slay out like the monster that he is and just put them in a commanding lead to get this 5-0 in the series going. And it's just looking too good for Epsilon. They're just looking too far in control. And it, it's actually, it would be a bit of a disappointment to see them not take away the first position in the league with how confident and how well they've been playing. Yeah, but it once again comes down to that uh, that LAN event where they just got stomped on by Vitality 5-1. You know, 
if that would have finished 4-2, just think how different it could have been. It shoulda, woulda, coulda, but Epson are now trying to make up for that poor performance at that LAN event. But one thing I'm going to touch upon briefly is a couple analysts at the EU Pro League opener said they hope this roster doesn't change for Epsilon because they were concerned it may change after such a disappointing performance against their rivals. They didn't make any changes. They stuck to their guns. They went away. They practiced the things which they made simple mistakes on. And right now they are looking like the best team in Europe again. No disrespect to Vitality whatsoever. It's hard to actually establish which side is better because every time they meet each other, one team wins and then the next time they meet, the other team wins and it does go back and forth. But right now, Epsilon do look stronger out of the two, in my opinion. But saying that, Joe stomps on Carnage there and should pick up this kill on Gatarga. If I'm not mistaken, no, Gatarga is going to just play that shield. No, he's not. And it's just lots of gun battles down. And right now, Joe is going to be perfectly happy with doing this. He's just going to try and dance around, try and waste some time. 40 seconds left. This is GG. This is map done and dusted. It's going to be 5 0 in favor of Epsilon. And you've got to say, it's thoroughly deserved. Absolutely. Epsilon just look too good right now. They, they they look so, so in control of every game they play. And it's no surprise. It is exactly as you said. They. They knew that their problems didn't lie in the players they had. It just lied in some of the practice that they had, some of the setups and the strategies and how they approached the maps. It's not like in that stomping that they received from Vitality, any of the gains were overly in the favor of Vitality. Let's be honest, they were all very well contested games. And in some occasions, it was just an unlucky, fortunate event. So I don't remember every single game there, but I remember the hard point, the first one, they lost by a matter of a couple of points yep. to some unlucky kills that just weren't trying traded correctly and it's it's the top teams that know when a team change is needed because things aren't working it's usually down to who's calling shots who's not listening who's doing this who's not performing correctly the yep. top teams will know when a, a team change is needed and you rarely ever see it in the very top tier teams but all the other teams you'll the, the, a problem might occur things might not go their way and instead of blaming themselves for a decision they made or blaming one of their strategies or not practicing a strategy or not for not anticipating something they think a simple team change is going to fix that which is yep. not always the case and I like these teams who will stick together through thick and thin already have that chemistry and they just keep building it and building it and building it that's, that's exactly what you need and that's what these top teams do but saying that and I'm going to contradict you a little bit here. VWS right now, obviously, they were two in the lead. We are going to try and get a score update, but VWS just changing their roster, getting rid of half their team, actually seems to have really worked for them against a side in Hyper Games who are in a form right now. They, you know, they've beaten Infuse. Yeah, I think they've beaten Vitality. And in now, that situation, it was a... You could see for a while VWS... It yeah. wasn't working. No, I, no, I've no. seen them in person. I've seen them against teams who are not in that top echelon. And they're not struggling, but they're not putting their name at the top tier of Call of Duty. And yeah. in that situations, I can sanction, well, sanctioning like I'm the boss or something. But I think it's okay to make a team change if it's just not working when you've yeah. got that experience. But this team, this Epsilon team, they didn't have a lot of time together. Yeah. It was quite a new team. And all the, and they had one LAN event where they actually played very well. Mm -hmm. But they just got unlucky at one series. And they're like, we're not going to change things after one game. What, yeah. what, what would be that about? Let's try and work on some things. And they've done that. They've gone home. They've done their research. And they've come back fighting. And they look absolutely incredible right now. And that's 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 incredible to see. I mean, yeah. you could say in the option of Infused, even though they didn't feel like they worked together as well, might say that this te new team works better, but they're not putting the same results out. No, the thing about Infused is they are quite inconsistent at the moment. And... That's something you expect from a newer team, so to speak, or a newer roster. So, you know, we are just going to get some score updates through. So I'm going to update you as soon as I have someone whisper in my ear saying, hey, this is the final score. But, you know, Infuse, as I said, they are quite inconsistent at the moment. And that's the thing about roster changes. It's, it can work for you again or against you. But score update just coming in. VWS 2. Hyper Games 2. So just as we were saying, uh, VWS, that roster change is really working for them. Maybe we've just been a little bit... Too Hyper games ahead of love ourselves. a bit of online cod. Hyper games are ridiculous online. They're they're just so good. It's yeah, it's absolutely insane to be honest with you. But there is a score update at the bottom of your screen. I'm having to look at it right now. Vitality six, G two nil. Neither of us predicted that. And now Epsilon seeing that will say right, this map is even more important now. It was important before the six zero to try and put themselves in a comfortable position. Now they need this map out of necessity. 
they genuinely need this map. And as you can see at the bottom of your screen, score updates are coming through. I'm trying to have a look. Yeah, it's awful, awful positioning. But it's now 5-0 in favor of Infused up against Overgaming, which isn't a giant shock, but we are now going to jump into Detroit S&D. No, we're not, as it has just ended. So we are going to just talk a little bit more, so to speak. So Infused 5-0, Overgaming, that's no great shock. VWS Hyper Games 2-2. Now, last week we casted the Hyper Games against Infused game, and we said Hyper Games are now favourite to finish third. If VWS pick up a draw, they will then not be favourites for third whatsoever, and they pretty much guarantee themselves... Well, they actually they won't, because Infused playing Vitality next week, they're probably going to drop points as well. So that race for third spot, we haven't spoken about it a lot today, no. but that's probably one of the most interesting out of all of the little competitions we've got going in. So we've got the fight for the top, got the fight at the bottom, and then you've actually got the fight for third. So it's really interesting to see how that's actually going to unfold. So I think map difference is also going to be crucial there as well. But Yeah, Infused uh, yeah. Uh, actually have a plus six map difference, whereas yeah. Hyper Games, at this, this is all at the start of tonight's proceedings, had a zero map difference. They were right. completely even, but up by one point. Well, if Hyper Games draw tonight... And they then go 10 10. Yeah, it would be yeah 10 10 on points, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if no, it wouldn't. It would be 12 t 12 11, actually. So next week, it, there's so much to play for. Although this is a penultimate That's week, a big game as well. this week is so important for setting up the final week. So, guys, I'm going to say it straight away. Next Wednesday evening, make sure you haven't got anything planned for I wish your we family. could watch them all. Honestly, I, it would be great if we had something like, you know, Sky Sports and like that, where you can switch in between screens and things like that. Unfortunately, we haven't got that. At the same time, we are going to make sure you're completely updated as if this is the final day of the Premier League. So it's set up very, very nicely. We are going to take a look at the maps, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously, Detroit S&D is the final map of today. Look at that on your screen, though. It is Epsi World all over. S&D Detroit, this is an Absalon choice, obviously, on their own host. So, Trout, we saw a 6-2 demolition of Millennium whilst they were on their own host. Is this going to be even worse on the Epsilon host? Um, I don't think it's going to be a demolition. I think it's going to be a little bit closer, but yeah. I, I don't see Millennium taking it. They just, I think they've literally just thrown in the towel for this game week. They... Yeah. They're probably well aware of the fact that VWS are playing. I don't know if they're listening to the, to the score updates. In my opinion, they shouldn't be. They should be focused on what else is going on outside of their game. They should be focused on their game and then find out the updates afterwards. But they're probably thinking Hyper Games will do us a favor. They'll beat VWS quite cleanly. Yeah. Uh, even if they get a draw, it's not the end of the world. They'll still only be a point behind. Then they're yeah. focusing on that showdown next week. Yeah. They are probably going to be practicing non-stop this past week because that is huge. Because whoever loses that game is more than likely going to be ending up in the championship next season. Let's be yeah. honest, neither of those teams want to be in the championship. We have got some incredible talent coming up from that championship as well. We've actually got Spirit Gaming and XL Black right now who are battling off in that championship spot for first place. So those teams are more than likely going to be heading into the premiership next season. But on to tonight's game, Epsilon Millennium. It's fine. 5-0 to Epsilon right now. This map is all still too important for Epsilon right now. Doesn't mean as much to Millennium, but they're still going to be wanting to go with their heads held high to at least have taken a map off Epsilon. 100%. Well, next week I have worked out the maths. Obviously, if, they, if Epsilon win this map, then there will only be plus two difference between Vitality and Epsilon. If Infused take two maps from Vitality next week and it finishes 4-2 and Epsilon wins 6-0 next week, which they should do, Epsilon will be your champions. However, if Epsilon do not win this map, the only way they can be champions, if I'm not mistaken, is if Infused take a point off, or actually, yeah, take a point from the series against Vitality. So, yeah, it's all to play for here. Epsilon, if you are listening, which I think you are, this map could be the difference between you being champions and taking the maximum prize pool or going home in second. But it is currently 1-0 in favor of Millennium. Supposed to be a top start from them. Look at that. Look at the passive play here from Epsilon, though. One in mid-street and one. Look at Marky B just to the left outside blue here. Carnage is actually in blue itself. And I don't like this positioning from Carnage at the moment. So many angles he can get taken out from. One player from Epsilon in green as well. Marky just to his right. The grenade has just been spotted. Should be a kill here. And it goes in favor of Carnage. Ooh. But it looks like the wall bang is coming to effect. But Carnage gets away with his life here. 
Wow, what a start. It's nice to see Carnage rocking that submachine gun. He's actually pretty good with it. I don't know why we don't see it from him a little bit more too often. Uh, yeah. He's doing a great job right now. 3 and O Millennium Gataga is also 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. Looking a little bit stronger on the Detroit Search and Destroy right now. And they have managed to get that bomb down on that B building right now. Rated oh, are going to get taken oh, out. And that's 2 0 to Millennium. This is what we like to see. We don't like to see the French getting hyped. We, we've actually got a lot of French guys in the chat right now. Yeah. I know there is a French stream going on for them. But yeah. No, they nice don't. They don't want to listen to their yeah. own language. They want to. They want to see the mighty Trout and IHNK go big on MLG.TV slash Gfinity plug plug. But it's two 0 in favor of Millennium right now. Uh, in favor of Millennium right now, I should say. And you know, it has been a top up from them. Rated, put that HBR away, my friend. It's not working for you. You are currently breadstick and two. I think we'll actually let him off because it's only. Round three, so yeah, it's not the end of the world for Rated, but we are going to stick on board with him. He's going to peek around Ambulance. He did spot someone mid-street, if I'm not mistaken, but the aggression from Millennium coming into play. Two players pushing that garage area, as you can see on your screen right now. All four players up from both sides thus far. Rated turning around at the wrong time, in my view. Marky does get first blood, though, on Melo here. And yeah, look at the positioning Ooh, from Carnage. Is what is Carnage doing right now? That positioning is... Yeah, it's, oh, no. well, he's, he's not going to get that? this kill. No, it's going to get traded up as well. Yeah, poor play there from Millennium. Not really sure what they were doing trying to anchor that particular position. But Epsilon, they take advantage. It's now 2-1. And yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I think that's it'll be a bit of a surprise start for the likes of Epsilon. They'll probably start there going, hang on a minute. We're under a bit of pressure here. They only took two maps off us in the last SMB, and they've already taken two maps off us after round two. So that was a big round for Epsilon. Probably for confidence, but still early days yet. Still a long way to go for both sides. Absolutely. I mean, it was just unlucky. Carnage just could not get the kill on that guy to trade it away. And it backfired completely for them. Ended up being a round to Epsilon. It's 2-1 now. 5-0 in the series. And Azox going to chuck some nades into school. Pretty decent nades. Unfortunately, they didn't pick anyone up. He is going to spot someone in mid-street in that gap right there. I've got a special name for that one, but I won't dodge into why it's a special name spot. It's quite dirty, but also <laughs> quite PG-13 at the same time. I don't know what. But anyway, <laughs> it's an inside joke, I guess, but Azox and crew have managed to break this school building right now, and they are going to get the bomb down. Some shots being fired by Raid. He does tag someone up. He spots Carnage as well. All yeah. the Dukes oh, in front yeah. of him. That's well played from Millennium. It's going to be 3-1 now, and we're seeing the French get back into it. If you're in a 1v4 predicament, the one place you do not want to be on Detroit is on top of Mid-Atlas or in and around Mid-Atlas. So that was, you know, unfortunate positioning there for Rated. But at the same time, Millennium are forcing Epsilon to make mistakes right now. This is so much better for them. And this is Epsilon's pick as well, this one. Well, one thing I was just about to say, it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> Isn't it quite interesting, the fact that as a whole, and I say as a whole generically here, hi, um, Millennium have actually performed better off of host. And that's a little bit strange, but Sometimes you do see that, to be honest with you. You know, they're just going to sponge yeah, off that beautiful connection. And This yeah. game's funny when it comes to connections. Like, some, there'll be some games where I'm hosting and I will play really well. Like, I, I've got perfect connection to some people. And then there are other games where my connection makes people play better. Yeah. They get a better hit registration than I am. Yeah. I don't know if that's a lag comp thing or what. It's horrible. But I, sometimes I, I, <laughs> the connections are just... To, uh, they can be very hit and miss, which oh, is why wow. sometimes you need to take online play with oh, a grain a, of salt. That's another round done. Millennium are 4-1 in the lead here, folks. Could we Epsilon. see Millennium cost Epsilon the championship the, here? Do you know what's funny is the fact that Epsilon will probably win this yeah. far, at least 5-1. And if it does go to 5-1, they're still going to be gutted like they've just been 6-0'd. That's yeah. how much this one map... Losing one map means to these guys because it is completely up to Infuse next week to do the business for them. Yeah, and this is what's great about the Super 6 Series format. You have to keep yourself interested. You have to keep your chin up and you have to play for every single map. This is not a best of five. This is not, oh, we've just lost 3-0. Let's go for a beer. Let's do whatever. This is, you have to stay all six maps. And if you're getting 
absolutely drubbed 5-0 like Millennium are. You oh, can no. still bounce back, and we saw this against uh, Vitality. Millennium were 5-0 down, and they won the last map, and that could have been crucial in this championship race. However, it looks like Millennium, they have just been taken out, though, so maybe we're getting a little bit too hyped too soon. However, they are just two rounds away from essentially costing Epsilon, no matter what Epsilon do next week, the championship, which... It's a pretty scary thought, to be honest with you, and one I'm pretty sure Millennium will be happy with. And it's, it is, what you've just said is, it's pretty funny, to be honest with you, because it's still going to finish 5-1 in best case scenario for Millennium. But they'll be happy with that. They'll be like, yeah, great, we've just cost Epsilon, that's fantastic. <laughs> it will be like a win for them, which is, it's pretty weird, to be honest with you. However, as I said, we are getting ahead of ourselves right now. I am going to jump on board with Joe, once again at the top of that Epsilon leaderboard on s and Currently five and five. Reedy though on a breadstick. One and four. Dropping it like it's hot. And it looks like Ataka has just been first blooded here. Joe is going to go for a nade down midstreet. Thought he held on to that a little bit too long, but I suppose he knows more than me. That's why he's a pro player and that's why I'm sat casting regardless. <laughs> Another one down for Millennium. Big trade though by Mello. And this is very tentative stuff, it has to be said. Yeah, 3v2 situation. They're going to play the numbers game and rush Ooh. this out. Reedy does get the pick. It's a 3v1 situation. Azox got to be the hero. The Mr. Clutch for the French is what he is known as, at least in my world. He's always making ridiculous clutches. Let's see if he can do it one more time to keep them in this. Oh, shots gone down here on Epsilon. No flank coming into effect, though. I thought one player from Epsilon was flanking. That would have been a perfect pinter. Oh, risky oh, strategy lucky. there from Azox. But I suppose at one stage or another, you've got to have a little bit of balls on that front and just push in, try and get a pick there. But 4-3, back-to-back rounds there for Epsilon. You know, we don't really want to see a choke from Millennium at this stage. They need to keep up the momentum. They need to say, right, guys. Don't worry about it. We've lost two rounds. It's not the end of the world. We're still in the lead. Two rounds away from upsetting the party for Epsilon. Could this be... It would, well, I'm not even saying could this be. It would be such a fatal blow to the Epsilon hopes. But I'm going to stop repeating myself. So I apologize to all of you in the stream. I'm just so hyped. And it's just the same thought going around in my tiny little head. But Azox here pushing Garage. He does have support here from his teammates. First blood does go down in favor of Epsilon in Joe. But, uh, on Joe, I should say. Or from Joe, I should say. Wow, so many mistakes here. But really picks up a kill on Azox. And it's now 4v2 in favor of Epsilon. Millennium need to go big here. Absolutely. Reedy is outside his school place. It's Carnage left with the bomb. It's not the best of situations, but at least oh, he does have that bomb going for him. He's completely pinched here. He does spot one man. He's going to get the shots off. There is a man oh. waiting in the back door for him. He's going to get taken out, and it's leveled up at 4 all. Now Epsilon is starting to get back into the groove of it. I am just letting it slip a little bit. They were 4-1 up at one stage, so they can't yep. let this slip too much. The map, although not the biggest deal for them in the grand scheme of things, it's definitely a massive motivation moving into next week's game, and they need yep. every bit of motivation they can get. Well, saying that, losing 5-1 and losing 6-0 is very different when it comes to map difference for Millennium. They would actually lose six maps, so they would go minus six. And compared to if they lost 5-1, just minus four. Take away four, I should say. So this is also a big map for Millennium, and we haven't built that up as much. But if VWS can walk away victorious up against Hyper Games, I'm not sure what the current score is. I will try and get an update as soon as I possibly can. But en uh, enough of that. Let's focus on the game at hand. Such a big map. Such a big map here for both sides, as we've said. Score update coming in. Infused won their series 5-1. So that's uh, another score that's come in. So just the Hyper Games VWS score we're waiting on, as well as this one. Carnage does pick up a kill in mid-street there. Pushing into pit, though. 30 seconds to get the defuse. And is he going to go for it here? Is he, is he going to go for it? Is he gonna go I for think it? he might try and hope someone peeks it. But... Oh. Joe he's maybe right on cue. He's got to make a decision. He's got to do something. He has got a teammate to help him out here. He's got to make something happen. That's not the best of situations right now. Joe's going to challenge this. He pushes for the kill. He's got one left. He's got to go to the fuse now. He's not got enough time. Marky's going to come on cue. Well played by him. And that's going to be 5-4 to Epsilon. So they're one round away from being in a perfect situation going into the last game week of the Pro League Season 1. I'm going to ask you a question now. Quick fire question. Millennium lose this map, are they then favourites alongside Overgaming to be relegated? 
I think so, purely because I don't know what the other score is, and they seem to be keeping it close. So it looks like VWS yep. can compete with that French connection to see how it goes. And I'm assuming with the Millennium one, it's going to be no different for them. In fact, I think Hyper Games is the more difficult host to actually play on of the two French teams. In fact, it's 3-2 to VWS right now. And this is wow. the thing. Wow, so they've guaranteed one point out of that. Well, what I'm going to say is if VWS beat Hyper Games, three teams will be on five points going into the final week. It oh will be... Lordy. A well and truly a relegation day next Wednesday. However, let's focus on this game. Rated is now left in a 1v3 after Kataga picks up a beautiful little two-piece bomb. Is now going down in favor of Millennium. Rated isn't around this back caravan's area. Going to be pushing this locker's area. However, he's got it all to do or it will be around 11. And as I always say, anything can happen in a round 11 oh, situation. And that's melted. what we're going to see, folks. This map could... No, not this map. This round could be the difference between Millennium being relegated and Epsilon being champions. I cannot stress how important this is for everyone watching in stream. And yeah, it's, it really could go either way. So Trout, on the spot right now, who's winning this round? Epsilon. All right, I'm going to say Millennium, just to be different. Battle of the Casters continues. So who are we going to start on board with? Uh, let's jump on board with the Bomb Carrier, whoever that decides to be. It's going to be Joe. The absolute legend that is Epsilon Joe is going to move with his team up. Oh, this garage spawn Azox, Azox with the first blood. That is absolutely not what you want to be seeing on your screen if you're an Epsilon fan. They're still going to carry on moving up into this score. Oh, oh, oh Mello no, picks up Mello. Another kill. Oh, wow. What? I'm looking at Carnage right now. He's 12 and 5. No. And now Reedy's left in a 1v4. 1v4. He's done and dusted Millennium. Walk away victorious. Could that cost Epsilon the EU Pro League Championship? Has that put Vitality in a position where they just physically cannot choke? Epsilon choked the final map here. It would have been a hot 6-0, but Millennium back-to-back -back rounds here. And if I'm not mistaken, Azox picks up. I don't know if he got the ace there. He definitely got the first kill. He got the last kill as well. I'll find out about the kills in the middle. I think <laughs> my voice is breaking. What an unbelievable round that was from Millennium. What an unbelievable map that was for Millennium. 5-1 final score there. That could save Millennium from relegation, and that could cost Epsilon the... <laughs> <laughs> absolutely the grand They're prize we'll get up the grand prize on screen then and then the prize breakdowns just so you can see how important that map could have been but wow you got us you said it before the final score even came in would do you think now Epsilon are just gonna think Wow, they're, gutted. They're, they're gonna be as if they've just lost. I might even just go on Twitter quickly now and see what they say. <laughs> just, it's just gonna be rage. But we are gonna take a look at the prize pool right now, so you guys can see what we're getting so hyped about. So here we go. The champions will get seven thousand pounds. Man, I could deal with that myself. Runners up, three thousand pounds, so under half there. Third, one thousand, and fourth, three hundred. Now, you it's know, also <sighs> to point out that. The first four spots in the Pro League actually get an automatic spot into a 100k series yep. at, on the 31st of July, which I believe we're still selling tickets for here at the Gfinity Arena if you do want to get involved yeah. in it, I believe. May You'll be, be casting there? Uh, no, I don't think I'll be casting there, but I'll definitely be going there because we're going to have some unbelievable teams there. So the top four, Boom. I think, is... Yeah, they're yeah. guaranteed now. So yeah. it's, it is, in fact, sorry, uh, Vitality, Epsilon, Hyper Games, and Team Infuse are guaranteed to be coming to the yeah. event. They've got their spots locked in. Where they sit in the final standings is still up for grabs. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm hoping that we're going to be able to talk a little bit just so we can get an update on the final score live on stream with that VWS and Hyper Games score because it is going into map number six. I'm not sure which map that's going to be. But if VWS walk away victorious, that will be three teams on five points headed into the final day. If I'm not mistaken, over gaming, they're all but relegated in all seriousness. There's no way next week that they can actually claw back the deficit. Now they are going to stay bottom with one point, if I'm not mistaken. So over gaming will be joining the championship next season. We lose the first team from EU Pro League season one. However, Headed in to next week, the final week, which team is going down, assuming VWS win the final map? So it's VWS versus Millennium. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's... I think it's going to be Millennium. I yeah. think VWS, if they walk away, like, they've guaranteed that point for themselves right now. So it's so they're going to be on six points. Yeah. No, sorry, they're going to be on four points, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. 
going into the next week. So if even actually to be fair, if they if the draw gets pulled out, Millennium stay afloat, VWS get down, and Gamers Two stay alive. Yep. If VWS pull out the win, obviously they'll get promoted. Gamers Two, depending on the map difference in that one, should still stay. They they're in a better position, but they're still they've got something behind them lurking, breathing down their neck. So. Mm -hmm. I've got to say, I think VWS are going to pull through. I've been quite harsh on VWS over the times, but they have been looking decent yeah. tonight with their results, their result over Hyper Games. And it is still going on right now. Unfortunately, we don't have a correct score up to date to this point in time. But you can see it on Gfinity.net for the final fixtures. And I'm sure if you're on the Twitter sphere, you'll be able to see the updates as well from that. Well, obviously, we are going to have to wrap it up sooner or later. And, you know, headed into next week, you know, you've said that you fancy VWS to make a great escape. And I'm going to agree with you. I think if VWS beat Hyper Games, and there's still a big if, because if it finishes in a draw, then they will stay in the bottom two this week. Saying that, if they beat Millennium next week, they would still go above them. So next week's fixture between those two teams will be crucial. Same for the Infused Vitality. That'll also be crucial. Saying that, G2 up against Hyper Games, I think it is. That will also be crucial because Hyper Games pushing for third. Bearing in mind, Infused have got vitality, so Infused right now will be the underdogs to win, uh, to lose that. Oh, yeah, underdogs to win that series. So if they lose that game and Hyper Games beat G2, Hyper Games would get third and G2 could go down depending on map difference but that's the great thing about the super six series map difference so so crucial but that's pretty much everything from me those are my final thoughts trout over to you i think uh millennium need to spend this next week wisely about yep. their structure and their setup and make sure everything is polished for next week's games make sure they pick the maps they want to be playing on and they've got good strategies for it. Try and guarantee yourselves those three maps. Because if they can win all three of their maps, they have guaranteed themselves a point. They can stay afloat. VWS go down. Same advice to VWS. Practice your three maps. Make sure you've got your structure and your setup down. Save yourself the point. Well, at least try and guarantee yourself the point. And then push a little bit more if you can do. Because I, I believe that's what VWS actually need to do. They need to win that series to be able to stay afloat and... They look, for me and you, they look the favourable team. And yep. I think for... Some people will probably disagree with that. Millennium have the easier task of the two teams. So they need to just be able to do what they did in that last round, but hmm. in other games as well. So yep. I think that's it from us. It's been a great evening of EU Pro League. We are back next week on Wednesday at 8pm for the final week of Season 1. It is going to be a thrilling game. I believe we're going to be watching Team Vitality versus Team Infuse next week, as that is a big game for the top of the table. There's obviously big clashes going on. I believe the Millennium and uh, VWS game will probably be covered by Deserto France. So if for some reason you want to watch that, but you don't mind watching it in French, you can do that as well. It's going to be an incredible end to the Pro League. I really want yeah. to watch all the games. Yeah, 100%. Well, the fact that three teams could go down next week, the fact that two teams could finish champions next week, and the fact that that third spot is wide open. Honestly, whatever plans you've got for next Wednesday evening, say, no, I'm not doing it anymore. If your mum wants you to go shopping, you say, oi, no, I want to watch the E Pro League. Honestly, next week is just going to be so, so crucial for so many different reasons. There's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot of pride on the line. And more importantly, it's just going to be awesome to sit back and watch COD because that's what we all love and enjoy. Or we do love it. We hate it as well, to be fair. But yeah, that's everything from, from me, to be honest with you. Just I'm looking forward to next week. Absolutely. Incredible week. Make sure you join us next week at 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Follow all the updates on gfinity.net. Make sure you go to our league tab for the Pro League. You can check out all the fixtures for next week, league standings, and keep up to date with how tonight's fixtures have gone on. We'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good evening.
You're not on it? I'm on it. 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 Where are you at?